But the reality is, Lodo, we don't want leaders. Yeah. We want coaches. Come on. We want wow. consultants. Jeez. We want people that we can pay for their opinion, that they can tell us how off the field nice. we're doing. But when well, we're on well, the field, well. we're the play caller. We're the manager. We're the one that's doing it. Well, how well has that worked for us? Signaling from the conservative chasm of Central Valley, California. It's the outlaws your conscience warned you about. Let's welcome your hosts, Loto and Phil Bill. <laughs> Slap your mama and tell your neighbor somebody because it's episode 16. Man, I, I think we had so much fun with 15 that, man, we skipped right over our quinceanera oh, no. celebrations. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, yes. yes, 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 right? Yes, Philip? yes, yes, yes. Amen. I get so much in trouble on the way Praise now, God. But I, yeah. We had 15 as of last week man. with our bonus episode with Pastor Fua. That was great, quinceanera. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't Pastor Fuller Quinceanera. Oh no, but no, no, seriously. Oh, shout out to right, Pastor yeah. Fuller. Yes. Shout out to the whole team over there at Boss uh, Podcast, man. Be, uh, big about uh, or big on saving souls, you know. So that was super awesome, man. Having him, uh, we we got a bonus uh, episode out of, out of that. So Philville, man, what's drop the drip on this episode, bro? Well, we have a great line up today. It's great being back on Overflow, and yes. we're going to be talking about newsmakers and breakers. And there's a prophetic word that's, that's coming to true, it seems like, from our great prophet is AOC. And also, too, a Levi Gate is taking a place Man. across America and is grabbing the headlines. There's a great exodus taking place with some, not just the political world, but the entertainment uh, making some news. And there's some unity taking place with some parents across different uh, faiths, including Christians and Muslims. So there's some great, a lot of great things talking about. Also, we talking about a, a great icon in the entertainment business yeah. to do that so and of course we have an extended conversation loaded with who with uh our our guest for this month remember it's pastor's appreciation month so we can't oh, wait to get into that i can't wait yes and so, but before that there's some personal things you just want to check in Lodo, how's mom's going what's the update with mom man mom's doing good bro as uh some know that man uh we we had a little bit of scare you know uh she was getting ready to get on the plane last week on the same day she woke up, wasn't able to breathe, you know, took some precaution, you know, took her in, have her checked out, man. We found out what's going on. And I thank God that uh, she's she's a lot better. Matter of fact, she's a happy camper back at home with all of the kids and all of the millions of grandkids back there in Alaska, bro. Thank you for asking. Lodo, I saw on Instagram that one of the Fab Five just had a birthday, just, just took place. Uh, how does that make you feel? Your kid's getting older now. Oh, my gosh, bro. Yes, it was it was brother, our first boy. Brother, Man, happy birthday, you know, brother. Yes, yes, happy birthday, son. I love you. Um, you know, bro, I was just at a, a JJC, man. One thing I'll share with them is I, I found my favorite table, Philville, uh, you know, uh, and, and that was a table sitting there, you know, my birthday, my boy's birthday, yeah. surrounded with the kids, you know, uh, yeah. and, I, I, and, I, and I truly thank God for that table. You know, of course, it comes second after my table with Jesus, but just sitting at that table, it, it really... It really hit me in a couple of ways, bro, that I didn't expect. You know, I thought I was just going to celebrate my boy's birthday. We're going to, you know, do it up, man, celebrate him, you know. But I'm sitting there just stuck, bro. You know, I'm having conversations with him and with the other kids. And I'm literally living a dream. I hate mm. to sound so cliche. I hate to sound so millennial, you know. But 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 seriously, I truly, truly am, bro. You know, and, and, I, and I was telling the kids at JJC, man, at 13 years old, 14, 15, 16 years old for me, that wasn't in my cards. I never saw myself sitting at a table with my own family, you know, uh, guys, my age, you know, during that time uh, we had a 22 plan, you know, a 22 plan, yeah. you know, is, you know, you, you, it's a miracle if you make it to 22, you know, we might not see 20 and it's a miracle at 22 and I'm 40 <clears throat> years old, you know, and, and I'm sitting here with my family, bro. And, and, and I, my heart was so full brother. Yeah. You know, and we had all our kids, man. My be my two beautiful princesses. You know, our three boys. You know, so how how does it feel? Feel I'm still feeling it today, bro. It is yeah. such a blessing. I thank God. I say it all the time. I grew up thinking that God was not fair. I grew up to find out find out that I was actually right. God is totally not fair because there's no no nothing that I did to deserve such an awesome life, brother. So. I'm just thankful, yes. man. My boy, you know, grew up another year, man. You're you're a recent father, so you know what I'm talking about, brother. Yeah, yeah. Again, you have a beautiful family, and I just praise so just God for your mama. <laughs> yeah, just really, it's been a great inspiration to myself and 
Naomi. Praise and God. And also, too, I know a lot of things are happening in your life. And today yeah. is a very special moment, too. Somebody uh, had Man. a special uh, event here, right here in the studio. Yeah. But it was satellite across. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why don't you tell the folk about it, what, what happened today? So, so um, you know, I don't know if you guys remember, but a previous podcast, we talked about the seven phrases and words that uh, in emotionally intelligent Gen people use all the time, you know. I love that episode, Philville, because yeah. it was about phrases, you know, and really a lost art, which is using manners, being polite. Phrases like "please," "thank you," "you're welcome," you know. And so, so I, you know, I wrote the author man, and, and I said, "Hey, uh, his name is Bill Murphy Jr. He also uh, uh, runs the understandably.com website." Um, but we got his article from I think it was the Apple News, wasn't it? Yes. So this guy's yes, syndicated definitely. pretty much everywhere, you know. And so I, you know, just reaching out to him, say, "Hey, man, thank you. We talked about this on your podcast. Even took it to juvenile hall. You know, talked about it doing our small groups. You know, and I was surprised, bro. He actually wrote back, you know. Yeah. And then he, you know, he said, "Hey, man, I inter- I interview interesting people, you know, all the time, you know. And then I, you know, I I I, I take that interview and make it an article." And uh, I actually sent it to 150,000 readers, oh, you know, and then, yeah. you know, he yeah. popped the question, hey, do you mind if, uh, if, if you know, would you mind doing an interview? You know, and I, bro, you know, my response, man, it was to like, do some ones like buffets. Of course, I would <laughs> love to, you know, like that was such an honor, bro. So, yeah, yeah, everybody, family, we did that today, man. So be on the lookout for that. You know, we'll, we'll definitely keep you guys updated. But, yeah, Philville, and I thank you again for helping me out on, on, on the tech end, brother. Yeah, it was a great interview. It just it's always amazing hearing your testimony. Right. Every time you do it, it's like fresh time hearing it and you it's always a different way of doing it yeah. depending on who you're talking about. So I can't wait to to see what the article comes out. No, bro, actually, man, I'm I'm glad that you mentioned that. You know, that it, it's it's like a different time because I share things in this interview. I don't know if you noticed, but I don't really share, you know, generally, yeah. you know, whenever I get you know opportunities to speak and all that in, in churches. So it was it was really awesome, bro. And, and I was just thankful, man. You know, again, shout out to uh, Bill Murphy Jr. of yes. understandably.com, man. Thank you for for just allowing us, man, to share the story, you know, on there. And again, Philville, man, I, you know, thank you for handling uh, the, the wingman on, on, on that interview. Yeah, speaking of being on the air, this past Wednesday, we had an opportunity to be at, and no, we talked about the fair, but we were yes. at the fair working this time. They actually let us in. <laughs> they let us in, yeah. <laughs> It was great. A shout out to KXEX. Yes. Just there. Amen. It was great. Uh, Dennis McCourt. Yes. On the Kingdom yes. Talk. Absolutely. We had a blast there. And yeah. Uh, of course. Jeremy, had, brother. You got to shout out yes, Jeremy. Jeremy. Man. Hey. Amen. Yes. He, he always helps us out technically. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, we had to stop by the rides. I mean, the the food rides. Yes. The food rides. Food rides. Favorite yeah. rides. Yeah. yeah. Had, had my corn dog, got a, brought a cinnamon <laughs> <That's> <laughs> roll <corn> back. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey, last week, those of you guys got to watch last week, we talked about, about <laughs> the fair. And uh, I got a text. He's like, oh, uh, I love the ramen noodles. Man, I'm like, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then we have a good follow up with that AOC prophecy. So I'm, I'm going to save that till we get there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can't we can't wait for that. But yeah. hey, speaking of which, now it's time for It's your news makers and breakers. Prophetic word in 2019 was spoken. Thus saith a AOC. Really she says, really want to get rid of <clears throat> quote unquote. Actually, let's play that little clip. <laughs> We need to innovate on our technology. You know, right. obviously, like I had a Stafford, you know, released a document that talked about cow flatulence, but. Um, which is an issue. I just want to say. Is an issue. It sounds ridiculous, but it literally is but an it, issue. But it actually is an issue when it comes to contributing to methane. Right. But that doesn't mean you end cows. It means that we need. <laughs> What? what it means is that we need to innovate and change yes. our our grain, uh, our our cow grain from which you know they feed in in these troughs. <laughs> okay. What's that one? She is a talking cow. This, you know, what's scary is what's uh, that? when she talked about this at first. Uh, she was laughed at. Yes. But there's one thing about, you know, her and, and those who are of this mi- uh, 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 state of mind, they just never quit, bro. They don't take a no for an answer. And this was back, what, 2019? 2019. And there I was think a, you have a follow-up, right? Yeah, yeah, there is. Before I do, I'm going to read this. There's some lyrics from a song that became yes. viral during that time. Uh, when cows fart and burp and splatter, well, it ain't no laughing matter. They're releasing methane every time they do. That was some of the lyrics. And then it goes on saying part of the messaging was, since we're part of the problem, we're, we're working to be part of the solution. 
And like you said, there's a follow up because they they there was, they predicted this right again the prophetic war that was taking place that we got to outlaw some things the regulation the regulations when people were calling Bro, it crazy. Who would have ever thought that uh, the most dangerous thing to our environment are uh, pedo blasters? Um, <laughs> yeah. So and, and 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 I think you know again you know this was a laughing matter you know before back in 2019. But again, the, these these folks, they don't know how they just don't know how to take a no for an answer, you know, and, and, it's, and the more ridiculous, the more concerned we should be because they just don't give up. Now we have a situation in New Zealand, right, Phil? Yeah, New Zealand, they want to tax farmers for their their cows burps and farts. No joke. CNN is reporting that a burp or fart at the dinner table might land you in trouble. But if you. If you're a cow or sheep in New Zealand, it might land your owner a hefty tax bill. It is getting crazy. They, what happens though? They tax them. Yeah. It just goes down to the consumer. Yeah. Again, flatulence problems. Yeah. It's, yeah. Again. Don't you, you know, hate flatulence is, problems, by the way? I, I, yeah, bro. I mean, we, you know, <laughs> I have a, it feels like we talked about this before. Oh you know, my I think we talked in our, in our Kinsey Hanna episode. <laughs> you know, but, but seriously, I mean, it, you know, again, it, you know, we need to take this as a warning. It, it, it is hilarious. But the more ridiculous, you know, these people get, it, it's sad because they're actually really serious. It is not a laughing matter to them as we see through this story. <laughs> Uh, Levi Gates taking, taking place across America headlines. So this is here's a story from the Wall Street Journal is reporting a pair of 1880s jeans just sold for watch this a seventy six thousand dollars. Why? Because they're in their pocket reveals a complicated piece of Levi's history. On that label from Levi's, it said, "quote the only kind made by white labor." Bro, you know, we saw just a while ago that Levi went woke, you know, and, and now we see this, you know, and I'm wondering how much they um, realize that the history is probably not a really good one. So they try to jump in front of it. My only response to this uh, to this story is wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Levi is out of pocket. Oh, OK. Read that one more time. Yeah, the only kind of made by white labor. Now, during this time, there was a Chinese Exclusion Act which barred Chinese laborers from entering the U.S. during a time of rampant anti-Chinese discrimination. Yeah. So it was making a statement definitely with the white label. Yes. Yes. And, and I, okay. Now, you know, so I totally get it. You know, we, we can deem that racist. That, that was very, very wrong. Very terrible. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for the time when we look back at abortion in the same uh, manner where we realize like, Hey, maybe it was legalized, but that doesn't mean that it was right. <laughs> In California, California, again, is making the headlines for an awoke, awoke agenda. They're now interfering again for into the doctors, uh, what doctors are prescribing mm -hmm. by saying they're making it illegal for doctors to disagree with politicians. What's really scary, bro, this is not something they're trying out. They already passed this, right? Yes. So, so OK, so now it is legal. This, this is not just being experimented, folks. Family, this is. So this law, again, exactly what it says, it prohibits doctors from disagreeing. It makes it illegal for your doctor to disagree with whatever the politician says. Remember all their talk about abortion? Every woman should have a right, you know, to make a decision, you know, between her and her doctor. Well, guess what? You thought that they cared about the doctor's opinions? No, they just made it illegal if it goes against theirs. So they just put politicians in charge of your health. How does everybody feel about that? I don't know about you, but we just came out of this whole pandemic thing. And it wasn't so much the doctors that messed it up. It was the politicians yeah. that messed it up. And now they want us to trust them with our health. Yeah. The article in the New York Post says conformity of thought is now required, whether it is online, on college campuses or in a physician patient relationship. We saw with PayPal, they wanted to include a $2,500 fine for yes. misinformation. Of course, mm -hmm. they it backfired and now they withdrew that yeah. and said it was a mistake. Now we're seeing that happening again in California. And it's like you said, it is already law. It's already law. And, you know, for, for those of you, you know, who, who, who just so inspired by communism, 
you might not know it as communism. They're, they're, they're wrapping it up as something else, but it's communism, Marxist and all that. Guess what? They just saved you an airfare to Russia. You don't have to go to Russia anymore. Come over here to California because we're slowly becoming exactly that. And, and it's very sad. What I am encouraged about, though, Philville, thank you for mentioning the, the PayPal story, is that, man, there was a people who stood up against that. They pushed back. What was it? Six million people. They lost PayPal. You know, so I, much. You know, yeah. they must. They lost a lot, and because of people spoke up, it it, it got uh, it got the the woke to wake up. You know, and so they're starting to change their ways. So the encouraging thing is that man is that we are still able to take a stand here in this America, which is still a free America, but it's not going to be for free for long if we don't stand up. But I thank God again. PayPal tells us, Philville, that something happens when the people take a stand. For their own freedoms. And speaking of standing, I, I think there's a and yeah, there's that's, a, that's, the really that's, unlikely people that's taking a stand, right? Yeah, they're taking a stand and there's an exodus happening yes. on a political party. And I'll just say the Democratic Party. And and it's not because of left and right. They're just saying it's becoming so extreme on the, the issues of the day. Yes. The first example is Tulsi Gabbard. She's she has a new podcast that make it made an announcement. Here's a little snippet. Shout out to the Uso. Yeah, here's a little snippet. <laughs> I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. It's now under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers driven by cowardly wokeness who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms enshrined in our Constitution, and who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality. It excites me, man. I, I've, I've, I've been a fan for a long time of Tulsi. Um, you know, ever since she really started speaking out against, you know, things that her party were standing for before she made this move. Uh, we don't shy. We are conservative, but beyond conservative, we are Christians. And and you could be a Christian on the other side, too. But I really feel at this time in history, there's some issues of the day that are beyond political party. And next we have it from entertainment, the crazy Rob Schneider. Well, you know, something's wrong. Uh, when when people say like if you put God and uh, f family and country first, that's somehow controversial. Right? How is that controversial? Or a flag is triggering? <laughs> yeah. So right. I think at a certain point you have to say enough of this and stand up to it. Man, this stuff is so encouraging, you know. And and, and it's not so much hey leave Democrat and come to Republican. I don't care what party you go to. It just so happens that Republican and conservative they align with a lot of you know. I'm speaking for myself personally. Align with a lot of things that I value. I love my principles. When I when I line my, my principles and values up with, with the Democrat Party, Democrats is, is, is generally known for supporting abortion, uh, known for for taxes, known for a lot of things that I believe myself personally, I believe is detrimental to our country and therefore to our personal lives. You know, you look at California and you look at the, the, the condition that it's in. Leadership matters. When you look at who's been in leadership for the last de you know, decades, you know, not just years, but last decades, it starts to tell a story, you know. And so I, I just I'm just one that think, you know, that, that man that that really believe that there are Americans out there that regardless of their party affiliation, they're starting to stand up. And I, and I also thank God, you know, for Americans like Tulsi and uh, Snyder, you know, who's taking the extra step of actually leaving, taking their support away from from a group of people, you know, who, who really broke, comes, you know, goes against a lot of the things that I believe in. It's worth noting, like. People like Joe Rogan, Bill Maher, even Elon Musk, a lot of them have been very promoters of the Democratic agenda for many, many years. And they are no means conservative. And I think it's really important noting that once upon a time, my my parents or grandparents, Democrat was like they're for family, they're yes. for helping the poor. Yes. They're for a freedom, for liberty, freedom of speech, for the right to take a stand on um uh, what you believe is what you believe, and you have mm -hmm. you have the freedom, the liberties. It's no longer that party for 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 all sense purposes, right? Man, thank you for saying that, Phil. Because okay, so here's the other thing, and to 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 your point, even if you don't leave your party, take your party back, take it that back, so and, and reinstall the principles that you actually believed in. And I'm talking to everyone who who is a Democrat, because I know that you you know your your better self don't believe in a lot of the things, a lot of the self destructive things, things that destroy lives. I know you don't support that. So you know, hey, I'm not saying go leave your party. If you're not gonna leave your party, at least take your party back. We also have to note that Republicans don't always have, don't have the answers either. Absolutely, we not. have to vote no. for our beliefs and values because there are Republicans that are completely just 
outrageous. I, I won't go down the list with, with, with that. But again, we believe in freedom. We believe in family. Absolutely. There is unity taking place here in America, unpredicted unity with conservative Muslims join forces with Christian right on Michigan book bans. This has nothing to do with Trump, a parent says, as people pressure officials to censor books with LGBTQ plus themes. Lodo, it is taking a place even even beyond California, this whole, uh, yeah, uh, basically pornography in the school library. Yeah, yeah. And to the first point that you made, bro, you know what's so awesome is that this is a surprise to so many others. Here at home, here in Fresno, man, I thank God, bro, that I'm a part of a church, man. And I have an amazing pastor, Pastor Franklin, who who we we reach across the aisles. We we reach across, you know, a culture. We reach across race, economic class. We reach across. See, a lot of people don't don't know, especially during uh, 9-11 and when you had the extremists, you know, uh, and all that. You know, we actually reached across, you know, with the Muslim community and, and we work together on 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 bringing peace and preserving peace and advancing peace, you know, together with other Muslim leaders here, right there at Cornerstone Church, right under our own roof, you know. So I thank God for this, and, and that's why I was excited, man, to see here, you know, like you said, you know, for for many, an unlikely pairing, you know, of of Muslims, you know, and uh, and and Christians. But again, both of these people, you know, group of people are conservatives, you know, they believe in family values. So that's again, I, I I'll speak. You know, not so much for party, but man, to to the values that we all share, you know. So it's so exciting, man, to see that, you know, a group of parents standing together, not just parents, but you you have even people who aren't parents, you know, siblings, you know, families standing together against this this outrage, you know, and, and this attack on our kids. Our children, they need to be worried about math, writing, and and reading. They don't need to be confused about their genders, bro. Some of the speakers allege that the books promoted mental health issues and self-harm while the school district and liberals were seeking to indoctrinate children. Again, this is promoting a lot of uh, lifestyles that were really raising red flags, and especially they were showing images. You hear a lot of stories about uh, showing kind of uh, sexual acts and, and just so much to even mention yes. here on, on our show, but it's very alarming. Yeah. Things that, that, that are, are or should be non-debatable. Things that you, we shouldn't even be debating when it comes to certain graphics, certain things that our kids are exposed to. You know, it, it's amazing that th these things are, are even debated on. And it's happening you here know. in our own town. Yeah. Now, let me circle this back to borrow Secretary Press's phrase uh, back to, to our, our our original story. Oh, no, one of our stories in the newsbreakers here. Now we're starting to see why we're making it illegal for doctors to, to go against politicians. You see. A lot of things happened, you know, during this last two years. One of those things is we had American parents standing up for, for, for these values for these kids. And they saw parents now that are taking over school boards. The thing that they fear are, are, are American parents who care about their children taking over the medical boards. Speaking of taking care of our children, we've had a great hit in the 90s. Uh, an actor in the nineties from the great little musical when Disney was a little more wholesome, right? From beauty and the beast actress, Angela Lansbury yes. died at 96 mm -hmm. man. so many over 65 years Legend. Uh, winning uh, five Tony awards. She's, wow. she's been an actress, but she's been on TV. Remember murder? She wrote, mm -hmm. I remember watching that with my parents as, yes. as, a, as a little kid, uh, just uh, great mysteries with that, but it, it's worth noting and a lot of generations probably watching this. Who is Angela Lasbury? What uh, Angela Lasbury? Did you see her name? Raspberry. <laughs> uh, a lot of people maybe wonder who she is, but if you watch Beauty and the Beast, she was the cup, right? Uh, in the, the mom, the mom, she, she yeah, the, the, she was, the matriarch. Yes, she was the matriarch. The matriarch, yeah, yes, of, yes, of the, of the movie there. And that's it for. It's your news makers and breakers. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, Overflow Extended Family, we come to the moment that we've been waiting for. I know me, me and Phil has been waiting for. You know, I want to introduce to you guys our wonderful guest for today as we bring to you our extended conversation with Pastor Nate Frank. You're listening to Overflow, the extended conversation. Conversation, conversation. Now back to your hosts, Loto and Phil Phil. Welcome back, everybody. I'm going to confess right now. Yes, it's confession time. In planning this whole month of uh, uh, Pastor Appreciation Month, honestly, we had one person in mind. 
you know, again, I, like I shared last time, we had lists, man. There's definitely people that was Mando on there. But I, I, I personally, and Phil can attest also, we, we really were yep. looking forward, you know, to really bringing our brother in, man. And, and I cannot wait to get into this interview. I'm going to stop wasting your time, his time. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce and welcome to Overflow EXT, a wonderful, amazing man of God, uh, recently married man. We're going to get into all that. But please, let's welcome Pastor Nate Franklin. Yeah. Woo! yeah. Come on, come on. Amen. Pastor Nate, thank you for joining us again, brother, and making yourself available to us. Oh, of course. I'm glad to be here. Now, I, I don't know what wisdom I'm bringing to the table today, but I'm just <laughs> glad I get to sit here in this cool little studio um, and we can go back into the details about this studio. But I am glad to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Pastor Nate, man, we've uh, we've known each other forever. You know, it, it seems like, you know, and that is definitely not a complaint, man. It's been such a joy, brother, just to watch you grow up but also to grow up with you. You know, uh, man, I, I want to be the first, you know, from this point, just to say thank you, man. I appreciate your leadership. I appreciate your love for God. I appreciate your love for your family, man. I appreciate the dedication and the commitment that that you sweat every day, you know, for our church there at Cornerstone Fresno, brother. I want to say thank you again, and I appreciate your your your, your pastoral ship. Man, thank you. Thank you. Um, so so today, uh, you know, like we, we talked about, you know, hey, what are we going to talk about today? Brother, I, all I want is for, for every, all of our audience, our Overflow extended family, just to get to know you. There's a lot of things that pastors, you know, talk about on Sunday mornings. And you might think, you know, you get to know somebody through, through hours and hours and hours, you know, through those Sunday mornings. But there's still a lot that, that people don't get to know. I know for me, man, I've gotten to watch you up and close, man. And I can't wait, you know, just for everybody else to see what I get to see, you know, that they can't see from a pew. Uh, and even on, sharing the stage with you, there's, there's so much more to you. Then just this pastoral role. So, so Pastor Nate, if you don't mind, can you tell us, you know, just about uh, uh, what I've been asking everybody else is, is tell me about, you know, for instance, little Nate or young Nate. And um, particularly, bro, let's let's start with with the big move, because you you're not you know, you, you weren't always from Fresno, but you are definitely Fresno. But I, I believe that you came from from a whole nother world. Yeah, we did. So um, my parents. uh I can actually say this. I can say that my parents drug me to church. I was that kid <laughs> and drug them everywhere. Every time the church doors were open, I was drug into church and drug out of church. That means I was also drug from Oklahoma yeah. by way of New Mexico to California <laughs> when I was five. Now, if you ask me questions about New Mexico, I may be able to answer a little yes. bit. If you ask me questions about Oklahoma, it's only what other people have told me. But I'll tell you where home is. Yes, amen. home is the no. This is come this on, is home. Um, you know, I, I still to this day will defend uh, Fresno, unlike other people understand, because there's so much that happens here in Fresno, so much that we get to be a part of that happens uh, through the world, and I'm glad to be a part of uh, to be a part of Fresno. But we grew up. Uh, we grew up here. I, I We moved here when I was five. I've got a sister that's two years older than me. She was seven. I've got a brother who is five years younger than I am. Yes. He was just born a few months old at the time. Um, and we came out here because God called my parents out here. Um, and their story is their story, but oh it's, my gosh, um, yes. it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and you want to hear that if you can ever pull um, them in to have that conversation about Absolutely. listening to the call of God. But one of the key points in that story is that, hey, man, they had a pastor. And on this month that we celebrate yes. and honor pastors, let me just say this with everything that goes around culturally, pastors get a bad rap some of the time for a few minor, small amount of people that pastors the majority of the time mm. are doing things that nobody understands. They're going through things that they're carrying weight that no, nobody else wants to carry. They're standing in the gaps. They're the only people that stand at the altar and at the funeral casket. The only person that does the, both things at the same time in their profession. And so my parents had a pastor that told them, I think you need to hear the voice of God a little differently on this one. Um, and they came out here and uh, for almost 30 years, we're about to ce celebrate 30, almost yes. 30 years. We, um, we have been out here in Fresno. Um, so it's 29. So 30s next year. Amen. Um, and we, Amen. Moved, yeah, we moved out here. This is, but this is home. Yes. Um, See, we knew this was going to happen. You, you're throwing out the big punches way early. So right? let's, let's go there. Fresno, you know, you, you said, man, Fresno is home. I feel you, bro. Like, like, you know, you, you know, I'm from the American Samoan Islands, you know, but Fresno is my home though. I, and, and I've been here, man, I grew up here. So I know exactly what you mean. You know, especially when people say, man, you know, nothing good comes out of Fresno, you know, nothing good happens. You know, we want to move out of here. 
I don't I don't feel that way though. Mm-hmm. I, I love Fresno. I call it, you know, she's my paradise now. This is the island that I'm I'm planted and, and I'm here, you know, and I and I just thank God. You know, you know, bro, uh, me and Maria, we have a, a insider joke, you know, all the time when you know about why we don't why we don't move anywhere else. You know, right. you know, we could move to Hawaii, back to Samoa, you know, we could move out, you know, south, you know. And uh the reason why we can't move is because we haven't figured out how to move. <laughs> You know, three to six thousand people with right. us. You know, come on, because we're so. You know, we thank God for our church. You know, we thank God. You know, for for everyone. You know, they're cornerstone. You know, but man, cornerstone wouldn't be there today without your family, brother. There's no. there's no and, doubt about and that, and that's what it is. Is it's family. Yes, um, home yes. home is where people yes. say home is where the heart is. No, home is where your family is. That's now so good. You, you can you can decide you can decipher how you describe or define family. Family yes. can either be the blood inside your veins, or it can be the chosen ones, the ones that you have gathered together Man. to choose yourself to be a part of. Um, I get the privilege and the opportunity to have both. That I've got blood family in our church, and I've got others that now, like yourself, have become yes. family over the decades. We don't even Amen. get to say years anymore it's no, decades man, that we have um, known each other and family is yeah. where home is and i and I, i'm just gonna step off and jump into this hole this hole for a second because i think that we see such a, a problem in culture today mm. such a scattering of people and one of the main problems with our world today is nobody wants to call a place a home wow Everybody is looking wow. for the next place to move to, the next job to get in, the next the next thing down the road when they don't realize that having a now really matters. Yes. Having a home really matters. Where do I see that at? Jeremiah 29. We okay. talk about Jeremiah 29, okay. 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, mm-hmm. plans to prosper you and not to harm you, give you a hope future. and a future, right? We love that. But can we just like rewind six verses or so, okay. four, five, and six? And, okay. And God says, you want to see that happen? <laughs> Take for yourself a place and build a home, have wives and have children, plant vineyards, establish yourself within a community. Yes. You know, the great thing about where we are and where you and my relation, our come relationship on, comes come from on, is because somebody decided to uproot themselves and wow, plant themselves man. in a place. Yes. What would just happen in our life if we would stop looking for the next thing Gosh. and we'd start be grateful for where we are and going, hey, what if I established myself. So so when I say Fresno is my home, it's not just, oh, it's just the place where my four walls are. Mm -hmm. No, this is the place that I've decided to establish myself so that the enemy can't tell me or distract me that there's there's other places yeah. that I need to establish myself. When you can put your energy in one place, what could God do within a generation if we would just establish ourselves somewhere and not just looking for the best next thing? This is so good, man. Yes. It, the, the now, you know, focus on the now, not so much the next. Cause if, if our, it, it, we need to get our heads out of the next or out of tomorrow, because if our head's too busy in tomorrow, guess what part of us is still stuck today, right. it's the other end, you know? And that's why, you know, you know, it just, it's never fulfilling because we're always daydreaming about this place or that place, you know, but thank you so much you know, for drilling down on that, you know? And, and, and it's so true that, we, we, we live in such a busy community or, or busy time, don't we? Oh, of course we do. You know, and, and everything's just going so quick and so fast. I think that's why, Pastor, um, so many of us have a hard time appreciating things. Speaking of uh, Pastor Appreciation Month, we're so caught up in what's next. Yep. We're so caught up in us guys. We're the worst at that. You know, there's a reason why. I don't you know. You have should a, speak for you yourself. Know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, but, but, you know, there's a reason why you have a guy who can sit on that couch, man, you know, and for three hours, they're just clicking away at the remote. Right. Kicking to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, because we're always thinking there's something better out there. If we just took time to just stop and just really experience where we're at. Right. Yeah. You know, and but but OK. What do you think attributes, you know, to to that that reality that that you're talking about that we are so focused on the next? Why are we there and what do we do about it? Well, I, I love in your intro, you talked about rhetoric, like we have to write the rhetoric of yes. today. Right. And, and clarify it. I think mm. the the rhetoric of vision is is mm. being reverberated around. Like, hey, we've mm. got to have vision. We've got to look towards tomorrow. You got to look to the next year. You got to have a 10 year plan, wow. a five year plan. I don't think that in and of itself is bad, Yeah, but you will never get to tomorrow if you don't walk through today. And so the reality is that we want to climb whatever ladder we're on and miss the importance of the rung that we're currently standing on. Goodness. And so we've got to appreciate, we've got to appreciate, we've got to appreciate, say that three times, we've got to appreciate the place that we are now. Because it realizes a couple things. It says, I am somewhere that I wasn't yesterday. (laughs) And if I can acknowledge that I'm somewhere today that I wasn't 
yesterday, yes. then it gives me two vantage points. It gives me to say, if I'm in a worse position than I yes, was yesterday, man. then that evaluation gives me yes. some, some critical information to change my current actions and attributes, right? Amen. Or it can do a positive of the same thing. Yes. I can say, if I'm in a better place than I was yesterday, yes. then I will reevaluate and say, what did I do yesterday from yesterday to today that got me here? There is my so goodness. much, there is so much goodness in our now, if we would just honestly evaluate, hey, our now gives us, it gifts us something. That's why the Bible talks about, don't worry about tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Take care of today for today has, yes, it has enough trouble of its own. My I am goodness. married with two kids, a four-year-old and a 15-year-old. I <laughs> um, have a large family and lead. Um, I'm a part of leading a very large mm. influential church. Yeah. It is. Um, and I don't say that of my own doing. I sure. say that of the leadership above yes. me, but, but but we all have things to do. That does not mean that I need to skip past my Come now. On. When I skip yes, past yes. my now, I miss what God is doing now, what God is doing in me, what God is doing through me, and amen. what God is doing around me. Amen. Amen. Man, okay, I'm going to pause right here. I'm going to let all of our audience take time to take the wheelbarrow out because that was a whole <laughs> gang of nuggets that they just got. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and empty that out so you can come and pick up some more nuggets. Right there, yeah. You know, but, but like I said, I, I want yeah. them to really get to know you, Nate. You know, so so can you tell us? You know about about you and yeah. and 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 um and just you know you know we talk about church life and all that you know sure. we'll, we'll always be growing up in church but kind of give me an idea of what growing up in church was like for you. Oh man, so I grew up uh, like I said, we moved here when I was five. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up uh, in a church that. People knew who my dad was, yes. not just people within the church, no. but um, people in the city, the mayor, the like influential people knew who my parents were because of what God was doing in their life and how God was using yes. them to influence others. Um, but that made me a target of visibility. Um, let me let me let me pause you right there. Let me let me. Let me okay. So for those that don't know, if you don't, please come out of the rock that you've been under. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, uh, Pastor Nate Franklin, son of Pastor Jim Franklin. My favorite pastor in the whole wide world, Come favorite on. preacher, you know, and uh, I just really thank God, Box. you know, for this amazing uh, man and woman of God, Pastor Cindy. Mm. So that's who this kid comes from. So, you know, I, I need to say that, you know, from, you know, before we move on to to the rest of what you're going to share, Pastor Nate. Yeah. And so so growing up, I was very people. I was visible in front of people, but I didn't yes. want I, call it what it is. I didn't want to be visible. You know, we look at um, what yeah. we just have the queen's passing, right? Culturally, yeah. she just passed. This is a really big deal. And sure. we talk about the Royal family and it's on every tabloids and they go, well, they wanted this of themselves. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we see this issue with Megan Markle. I think that's how you say her name. Like yeah. she yeah. didn't want to be as visible as she was. And that's part of the issue. Now there's probably 6,000 layers and I'm not culturally yeah. engaged with that. Like yeah. I should be. Sure. But the reality is I was in a spot in my life and my siblings, that we didn't want to be as visible as we were. I, I didn't want you to have to critique my life in a way that I yeah. wasn't already critiquing yeah. my life. Yeah. But I grew up in it and I thank God every day for the place that he has put me in Amen. because it made me who I am today. Don't ever underestimate where God has placed you because yeah. it will make you who you are tomorrow if you take advantage of it. You will be who you are tomorrow by what you do today. Yes. What yes. you do with Love what it. you're given today. And so I grew up in a church. Um, I did not want to be a pastor. You heard him introduce yeah. me. I was um, Pastor Nate now. <laughs> yes. That is not where I wanted to okay. be. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Talk about that. I was a five foot, uh -huh. five foot ten, hoping for that NBA uh, contract. <laughs> I don't know what nonsense I was on, but uh, but I enjoyed it. I played basketball twenty four yes, seven. Um, I found very myself, well. I found myself in high school playing yeah. um, basketball more, spending time with a sphere that uh, with my emotions and my. Um, mindset around a little rubber ball mm -hmm. um, more than I did actually engaging with what I was currently going through, talking to the Lord about wow. it. Um, and I found myself my senior year, probably in some spots that many of us found ourselves in um, and saying, what, what did I do to get here? Amen. And Amen. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't live as intentionally with the rest of my life as yeah. I did with my physical life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not putting, and we hear it in culture now, like you've got to put an emphasis on your mental well-being and your emotional well-being. Well, as a student that just wanted to make something of himself, mm -hmm. which plenty of us do, that's regardless of age, right? Um, I, I didn't put emphasis on what God wanted to do and was doing in my life. So I found myself senior year, hey, I I got to figure something out. I was, I, I say this, Lodo and I have talked about this, Philip and I have talked about this, like, 
man, I was angry for no reason. Man. There's a lot of people like Lodo, your life, you, you have reason. We just talked about it. You had an interview before this. Like <laughs> you had reason to go through something that it would have made you bitter. Yeah, yeah. Like Philip, you've had reasons to have things go on in your life where it mm-hmm. could have made you yeah. upset. And yeah. I was angry for no reason. I didn't have bad parents. I didn't have absent parents. I didn't have, I didn't live without. I lived, I lived with, I didn't like, um, so I, I don't, I don't know why I was so angry, but I was. You know, you know. Speaking of that, I, I do want to go back to to man. One of my favorite memories with you as as a younger Nate. I, I forget how you're old, bro. You were no more than ten or eleven, though, brother. And I remember I was standing in the lobby, and you walk in, and it was obvious that you were not happy. You were not a happy camper. You were upset. <laughs> Is it that obvious? And, and, Is it really that obvious? Uh, you know, my, my wife guy, tells me that now. It's guy, that obvious. You know, yeah. <laughs> but and, and and you know, and I said, dude, hey Nathan, are you are you are you okay? You know what you were mad about? I don't even know if you remember this. You you told me I, I'm just tired of people treating me different than my friends. Uh, I'm tired of them treating me better, you know, you know, and they treat my friends so mean, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I think it had to do with position. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the point, you know, so, so, so Nate, um, y- you're, you're at this age now speak to, to church folk, you know, please, you know, um, you know, uh, ch- church, uh, ministers, kids, pastors, kids, that whole, you know, uh, labeling, they, they already know what you're going through, but I don't think that church folk understand what, what, what you guys go through can you kind of speak to them on just maybe giving them just a few nuggets on how to handle a minister's kid or a leader's kid? You know, I, I will, but I'm going to broaden the brush a little bit Thank because you. I think we do pinpoint different segments of community Thank or you. groups of people. And we say, oh, well, we've got to treat them this way or we've got to treat them. Let's let's just be really honest. It's very easy for us to judge ourselves based on our intentions wow. and to treat others based on their actions. Jeez. That's non-believer, believer alike. Yeah. Like I can justify why I did this, that, and another because my intentions were right. And so I want you to treat me a certain way. But if I saw you act a certain way, not ever mm-hmm. willing or wanting to or desiring to get to know why you did that, I judge you based on your actions. And oftentimes we don't just do that to people in power or position or influence. We do that to everybody outside of us. Mm. It's like, man, what if we could judge others based on their intention? Yeah, wow. How we treated them. I'm not justifying people's actions. I'm saying about how we get to know somebody, how we engage with them, how much, how much grace we have for oh, them. Because wow. I, I, I just find it, and I'm, I'm a pastor, and so I believe in the Bible, and I believe that Jesus is the answer, right? And there may be people that aren't listening, but I, to be honest with you, the Bible tells me that God looked on me yeah. not because yeah. of my actions. Mm. If he, if he judged me based on my actions, we wouldn't be here today. Wow. Wow. But he judged me based on somebody else's actions. Mm. And what, what if we learned something from that? I like stopped looking at pastor's kids, PKs, deacons, kids, people of influence, celebrities, your boss, the people in your family that you don't understand and said, instead of reacting and saying, I'm going to judge you based on only what I know, the limited information that I know. Come Your on. action is limited information because it has a start and, a, and an ending that I yeah. see. But there, there's more to the story most of the time. Yes. And I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to okay or an excuse an action that's done wrong. We can all agree what's wrong and what's right. Yeah. But I do need to learn how to give grace to a person. I think you just helped. Uh, um a broken world healed up a little bit or, or to at least point the way if we really took more time, just figuring out the intention, why a person did something rather than just that they did something. I think we'll find out that there is a human behind it, that action. And that, you know, I, I know, I know as uh, f- from my background, you know, that most of the time, if people just took time to sit down and ask that kid, like, Hey, what, how did you end up in this lifestyle? You know, they might hear something that is so eye opening and it would actually turn that person from being the worst critic to that kid's greatest supporter when they yeah. find out why that kid did you know these certain things, bro. So thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nate, for for pointing that out, man. Let's, let, let me jump in there real quick. Sure, yes. Because you know, you get to be involved with people from broken, broken lives, like really sure. hands in, hands down, like you get to be upfront and personal with a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the reality is, as the, the world that we live in, we look at different systems. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
this system, that system, the home system, the family system, the prison system, the health system, the look at all those. And you get to engage on the, in those in different levels. Yes. Um, you know, when we see a problem or a person doing something and we're looking at solving a systemic problem, we oftentimes do. We still, we look as a world, we look at intentions and we use them as an excuse. Mm. You see the, the students that you get to spend, you and your wife get to spend most of your life circling around yeah. and the world would look at their systemic problem and make that an excuse. Wow. Well, look at what they did. Well, they did that because of this rather than seeing it as a symptom to the problem and knowing that we can solve that problem rather than define the person, we could solve the problem. But sometimes we look at the intentions of people or the problem or the world that they're in and we go, man, it's just an excuse. And I, I just don't want to have excuses in my own life. Yeah. I'd rather be harder on myself than I am on others. Mm. I'd rather acknowledge that others have systemic problems. Okay. They have, they have symptoms to a deeper problem and let let me help them find the answer. Yeah. Let me be an answer rather than let me be a, what's that thing called that the judge would use a, 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 the thing that it hits down, he hits down on a table. Yep. A gavel. gavel. The gavel. Yeah. I don't want to be a gavel. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to be wow. somebody that helps. Wow. I want to be the guy on the other side of the table. Cause if I'm looking for, if I'm, if I'm treating people that way, the Bible tells me that if I judge people that way, then, then the world will judge me as well as God will judge me mm. in the same way I judge others. I, I don't need more gavels in my life. I don't need yeah. more people looking at my life and slamming down the table. Man, pastor, um, all the answers are in the Bible. Come on. You know, and it's, it's spiritually, and if we took time enough, we'll also realize that that's actually true practically as well. But it just goes back to the second commandment, which Jesus equated, speaking of equity, Come on. you know, equated, yeah. you know, to the first commandment. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, soul body, and strength, but to love your neighbor as yourself. If we just judge people the way that we'd like to be judged, right? I think uh, we'd find ourselves in a di totally different world. You know, uh, we, we're talking about you growing up in church, you know, um, and, and, and everybody's got their stories, you know, and I thank you. Thank you for breaking down the boundaries that there's things that you suffered that all kinds of people suffered. It's mm -hmm. not just pastors, it's, you know, leadership in, in, in church, it's leadership in community, leadership in celebrity, leadership, you know, just, 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 man, it's, it's sad how we put these kids in a different category, you know, and, 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 and judge them. Completely different from what we call uh, "quote unquote" normal kids, right, brother. On. It doesn't get as no more normal than you, bro. Yeah, you know, right. and, and and I just that's why I was really excited about this podcast. You know, so people can't really see you. You know, uh, um, man. Okay, so we'll fast forward. You know, and, and and really, bro, with 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 the dynamic of 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 being this pastor's kid. You know, going playing basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, and and all of these things that you're facing. How in the world did you become a pastor today? Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't a light switch that I flipped one day. Um, yes. It wasn't like, okay, this is what I was going to do. Honestly, in, in short, and I know this is the extended or overflow, sure. but I'll just say this. Um, I went on my senior year spring break, went to go, go out of town with my friends. Yeah. And my parents have enough wisdom to not let me go with that group of people. The Bible says the bad company corrupts good morals. I always thought good company helps bad people get better. Oh, no. That is not the truth. The bad company does corrupt good morals. Um, yeah. My parents knew that and they said, okay, well, if you want to go somewhere for spring break, you can go see your sister. She was yes. at a Bible college at the time. Oh, Fast gosh, forward, yes. I went to Arizona um, and I was the kid angry for no reason, sitting in the back of a church uh, practice one night during that week. Wow. And um, take it clear as a day, I didn't hear an audible voice. I heard the voice, voice of the Lord speak to me in my anger and in my frustration say, are you done running yet? Wow. And then it was that moment, moment that I had to make a choice. Am I going to do my life the way that I think I can design it? Or am I going to follow him? Mm. I made a choice that day. Hey, I, I, I wasn't perfect from that moment on. Don't, don't get me wrong at all, but I made a choice that day. Yeah. No, I'm going to follow the Lord. And it wasn't, I'm going to follow the Lord into a career. Yeah. No, it was, I'm going to follow the Lord. So I got back from spring break. I decided, Hey, I'm not going to pursue any of these small little scholarships. I'm not going to act like I had D one offers, but I, some small little scholarships to some schools around here and a little further out. And, um, I said, no, because I knew that something had happened that day Yeah. that I had to go back to. I didn't understand it all. I didn't want to be a pastor at that time even, yes. but I knew that I needed to go be with the Lord because he exposed something in my life. Yeah. We're oftentimes so scared of exposure. 
But in the photo, in the photo business, not just the digital business, but in the real photo business before all of these digital cameras and everyone thought they were yeah. a photographer, mm. <laughs> you had to have a room, a place of exposure. Okay. Nice. Where the right wow. chemical balance, Jeez. the right light being let in mm. would bring about the picture that was graphed <laughs> before it was displayed. Yeah. And I had to go back to the yeah. exposure room. Because there's some things in my life that I needed to have exposed, some things that I needed to have understood, some darkness that I need to have light brought to, some areas that I needed to be see where light does shine out of and where yeah. some giftings that do come out of me and not because of I'm so-and-so or because I carried this or because I was known by that. But I needed to go to an exposure room yeah. to, to, to be developed because that's what it is. It's, it's being developed when you're exposed to the right chemical and the right light. And so yeah. I went to... Arizona. And for a year I did that. And I realized some things about my life that I didn't need others to say some things about me, but I started to have a concrete identity and who I was and who God had shaped me to be. And at that point I saw some leadership qualities. I'll be real honest with you that it was coming, came real natural for me to encourage people, to coach people, to not just tell people to follow me, but to be a leader and say, Hey, let's go somewhere. Let's do something together. So I went right on back to that development room. I said, I need to go a second year. Yeah. Came back after two years and I said, Hey, I got to do something with this. I worked a full-time job. And really at that time, uh, Philip was having the same yearnings for something <laughs> else inside of his life. Mm. And, uh, um, I come back at that same time and we happened to be on the same table to say, Hey, let's, uh, let's start a young adults ministry. And, this. um, at, uh, 21, we start. I was 21. 20. So that You're was, about to be 21. I was about to be yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was February when I was 20, um, 13, 14 yeah. years ago now. Yes. Yes. Um, oh, my wow. goodness. Right. You shouldn't time, have said that, bro. Time flies. Right? <laughs> uh, and, uh, and there we started a journey to start to see. And at that time, I yeah. still wasn't a pastor. I was just trying yeah. to serve my generation, really, um, our yeah. generation at that time to say, yeah. hey, we need to, we need to have a place for, for our generation to, to stand up, to speak out, and to be shepherd. So let me, let me pause right there again. Family, I'm going to let you take time to go and empty out those well barrels because the nuggets are coming in quick and fast. Exposure, you know, matter of fact, yeah. just forget the barrels, leave the barrels and bring this in my truck because this is a lot of wisdom. And, and thank you, Pastor Nate. I do want to share, you know, um, th- th- this this was the moment that I, I couldn't wait to share with people. Hmm. It wasn't that you just showed up one day. OK, ta-da! I'm pastor's kid. I'm ready to be in ministry now. You know, I, oh, I, I want to I want this because this is what I'm supposed to do. Brother, w- I've walked with you and I've seen the struggles, you know, and, uh, and I know the pastoring wasn't your, your first, you know, first choice. You know, I remember you know, the basketball thing, uh, 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 law enforcement, you know, just all these different things that we were, you know, you had mentioned and, and, and talked about, you know, and it was like, it was crazy because to me, it's like, isn't the no brainer to go this route? Like, what are you doing going all these other routes, you know? <laughs> And, and and I just, I thank God so much, man, because it's not just as simple as you just showing up one day, just ready to take on this role now. Like you had such a journey, but I will testify to your leadership, brother, because of what an amazing servant you are. I, I want to, I want to share just another exposure, uh, exposure room mm-hmm. where I got to see the picture mm-hmm. of who you are. And that was in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. When we went out there on the short term mystery trip out there, man, family, <laughs> I saw yes. uh, a Nate that I I wish, but I thank God now that everybody gets to see it every Sunday. But I got to see this guy a long time ago. I mean, when Nate was out there, this guy had the authority to just pull card, pull rank and all that. But it's always Lotto. You know, how, what can I do? How can I serve you? Maria, what do you need? What, what does Lotto need? Philip, what do we need for worship? What do we need? You know, and, and it was always just servant, 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 servant. There was never any any a uh, 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 pull of authority or anything like that, bro. But because of that servitude, Nate, I fixed it in my heart. This is the guy that I'm going to follow. This is the guy that that I want to serve. This is a guy that I, I want to lend my shoulder to. I want to lend everything I have. I'm going to put it behind this guy, man. You know, because again, you talked about the exposure room, bro. It mm-hmm. wasn't just Arizona. It was also out, out right out there in Hawaii, man, in the middle of the, you know, of the, of the islands, you know, that I, I, I saw an authentic leader, you know? And mm-hmm. so, so brother, you know, I just want to thank you, man. You know, I, I know some, not all, 
maybe most, you know, but some some of the costs that 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 this has, you know, uh, placed on on your life, man. I know you had to give up things and all that, but you you bring up a very important part of, of your journey, and that's the edge. Uh, Philville, you were such a big part of that with with uh, uh, Nate. Of I just I remember a hilarious time. We were in the a tiny apartment. I forget how many of us. <laughs> we didn't have no beds, nothing. Did, we went to a Walmart, I think, and we got uh, yoga mats. Right? That? Yeah, we oh slept on the floor. <laughs> I literally like don't move that way. Don't we're making so many jokes because we're right. literally like really close. Uh, what are what are some of those funny mem- memories of that 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 trip? And I, this, I I can't remember any of the humor signs besides us trying to figure out how to get around the island. There's only <laughs> one way. Like you can only go one way or the other, and we still couldn't figure out how to get around the island. And then uh, I wasn't quite sure. I'm not a big spam person, but I wasn't ew, quite sure. Like spam yeah. was a real thing that yeah, like yeah. everybody on the island. Oh my spam, gosh. yeah. No, and then I, <laughs> I tell this story often. Uh-huh. Um, we were uh, so culturally, I learned things when I'm in around different cultures, mm-hmm. right? And so we were uh, um, we were at a cultural church event. Um, they were feeding us. Oh yes, and they kept feeding us. Oh, oh man, and they kept feeding us. <laughs> and as I sat there, they kept feeding us. And I think I was three plates in going, I don't know if I can do this anymore. <laughs> when I then learned they won't stop feeding you until you get up. Uh, <laughs> they won't stop feeding you until you get up. They will continue yeah, to serve. And so yeah. I don't know how much taro I ate that day. Oh or my um, So much food. But they yeah. just kept, they kept bringing food. Man, I, man. I remember one service. Mm-hmm. We did ministry to dramas, did all these different things. And you preached. I have no idea what you're going to say. I'm so yeah, scared. I, uh, <laughs> I remember. I put my, I made a, I was, I had an embarrassing moment and you were trying to help me. This is what was happening. I was playing a song. I think, uh, one of the old songs, uh, don't deep cries out or something like that. And all of a sudden I went in corner some mode and at a certain part, certain in the edge of that young adults ministry, yeah. we went bilingual. But it oh wasn't, goodness. we're in a Samoan church in the middle of that singing Spanish <laughs> yep. and you're shouting the lyrics out, like, trying to well, help me. Like, come on. And you're like, okay, I'm going to try to help Philip. But uh, anyways, it was it quite was, a but Thank you, by the way. No, how about that? I'm telling you, man, servant, man. How about uh, the, when you were doing, we're doing worship at the Samoan church over here in Fresno. <laughs> I had no idea Nate knew how to play drums. I had we're, no idea I knew how to play drums. We're putting a picture on right now. Yes, that is a, a Pastor yeah. Nate Franklin yeah. on the drums. Yes, yeah. I was I such mean, a leader. I was trying to lead the tempo in a different direction. <laughs> but you turned. It almost worked. Oh, it I was like, worked. Yeah, I'm yeah. like playing. I'm like, just please play, just just play a basic beat. And I turn around yes. and I look at him. He has his big old grin. Yes. Yeah, like, I was loving it. Yes, man. <laughs> Wherever we can be used. That was yes. that again uh, exposure moment. You know, that's that's when it just became evident, man, that uh this is not just a kid, you know, who just grew up in church. This is a kid who's actually learned everything about servitude and, and he's living it out. Pastor Nate, man, let's let's fast forward, you know. Um, so I gotta, I gotta pause there. I know go we're we've got time, we've got to cut time, <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay. You can You're cut fine. me off and delete me. Sure. Um, we talk we talk about that season of my life, that season of our life. All of our lives was very crucial. There were some things that you were learning yes. in your own life about what God was prepping you for, what was next. There were things that God was developing in mm-hmm. Philip for his current season and where he's at right now and what God is doing in him. Um, there was also things. So what that meant is that we were all a little rough around the edges yeah. in yeah. some areas. Yeah. There were there were some soft spots and there were some hard edges in our life. And I, I sit at this table and our friendship goes Man. not just with laughter and tears, but we've had some pain moments sitting oh um, goodness, together bro. at this at this table to where um, I, 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 I learned y'all helped me learn what good leadership is through my <laughs> moments of bad leadership and um, harsh words or bad tone mm. or disrespectful moments. And I'm just, I have to say this on air sitting with y'all. Like I'm thankful that I, uh, that y'all endured with me during the times that I had some growing pains that the pains didn't affect me. They, they affected y'all. Um, from the times I, I tell people this all the time, I, I talk about it whenever I get to introduce you that there was a moment where I was preaching and I was preaching with a wrong tone. Wow. I didn't have wrong intention, but I had wrong tone. And Lodo called me like a good friend would, a good mentor would at that time and said, hey, let's have some conversation. I'm going to be the one to tell you up front. You can't speak like that. I wasn't saying anything wrong. I was saying it in a wrong way. And I needed to be corrected. There are times that Philip and I have sat across a table where he's had to say, I believe in you, but you are 
causing pain in my life by the way you're doing this, that, and another. See, the reality is when we're growing, we're going to hurt those closest to us yeah. unintentionally at times. But it's our deepest relationships that can endure through those moments to believe God's best for us in our life, to see that God wants to flourish us. And I'm thankful for the forward conversations that I have had individually and collectively at this table that have yeah. made us who we are, that now when we see God starting to open the doors or reveal things, everybody gets excited for what's being revealed to the public now, right? About our lives, yeah, yeah. but they, they weren't in the, let me go back to it, the dark room in yeah. our lives with the few people that were willing to, Hey, let me help as iron sharpens iron. Let me, let me shave some things off of you. And maybe my, person needs to be the one that causes the friction between, but I want to mm. help shave some hard spots off of your life. And you two were some of the people in my life that helped shave those things off of me. We had some friction moments, but it created a family atmosphere within us that now any moment, yeah. any day we can pick back up like we have on this thing. And I'm thankful for that. Yeah. People don't miss this. There are people in yeah. your life that may be friction, may cause friction in your life. You may feel like, man, why is this happening? Or why are they saying that? they are causing friction for your development. Mm. Friction yeah. saws off things that aren't supposed to be there. If we really believe that the Bible is true about iron sharpening iron, iron only sharpens each other when friction is involved. So yeah. Good. yeah. So you want to respond I, to that, brother? Wow. <laughs> that was a lot. Uh, I remember that the, a lot of those seasons, you know, mm -hmm. it, what was so great. We're just navigating our calling. We had a calling in our lives. We right. recognizing each other. We're trying to get the work of the Lord done. We're trying to take care of ABC. Let's get, Let's get this task, this task, this task. But in the middle of that, it it was the last thing. I, I didn't know I was going to be doing ministry with you, you right. know, uh, in that particular season. And uh, I remember this is you guys watching is that great friendships and brotherhood happens in the trenches. Yeah. That's and, so yes. and you in those in, in the trenches, you're willing to take shots for another. Yep. At the same time, you're able to have that friction with one another. Yep. But but it's OK. You have a security knowing it's going to work out. Yep. I remember uh, whatever the, we're dealing with preference, we're dealing with how to, or dealing with whatever that is. And for the personality, uh, we went into an office. I remember and you sat down and you're basically a paraphrase. Where do we go? And I'm like, that conversation I think was a, a pivot thing in our relationship, but also to that showed me your leadership and your loyalty to so many things, man. I, I could just yeah. preach for so much, but yeah. but thank you for that. And I remember that season, and 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 for you to say that, just like, hey, God, God has a calling for each one of us, no matter where you're at. God can use that friction and just reveal so much more than you ever thought could, could happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, Pastor Nate, man, I I just I, I know I feel I can also speak with Philip, man. That thank you. I want to acknowledge, you know, everything that you just shared. Thank you so much. That is so appreciated. Um. And it's so necessary, you know, because there's so many others who who, who goes through the same things that we go through. Philip says something, you know, you great you create a great brotherhood in the trenches. I've learned to appreciate my foxhole brothers. Mm -hmm. Something happens when you're taking bullets, you know, and they're flying over you, and you're in that pit together. There's a bond that 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 begins to grow. You know, I um I want to speak to the family too. You know, for those of you. You've got brothers, you know, and, 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 and sometimes it's like you don't want to be the, the bearer of bad news. You don't want to be that guy like, oh, I don't want to bring it. Out. I don't want to, you know, but I'm telling you right now, you, you have to. You are your brother's keeper. You are your sister's keeper. But here's how you do it. Don't you ever try to bring correction if there's no commitment. Don't ever bring correction That's without so commitment. That's so good. You know, I, 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 uh, I dedicated my life, my family did, to Pastor Nate and his family. At a very early age, I, 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 I serve them out of, out of my gratitude for their parents. I owe it to watch out for their kids, you know, and, and there was a commitment there. And then that commitment grew into our brotherhood yep. and your, and your little, you know, James, you know, and Jessica, and, and there was just, just, this just, just, just brotherhood and fellowship just, just grew and we're sealed tight for, forever. And so, you know, because of that, I, I did have a certain, okay about bringing things up and addressing certain things because you know what well, come hell or high water i'm gonna be there with you afterwards to deal yep. with it 100%. i'm gonna be right there with you afterwards it's, it's not just like we just throw the blows and walk away again 
don't ever try to bring conviction if there's no commitment there between you and whoever you're trying to do this with. You know, that commitment is so important. That's how healthy correction happens. That's how it begins. You know, that's so good. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing that. That's so good. Amen. Amen. You know, I, again, I, I told you guys, you guys should have got rid of the wheelbarrows. What about the semi trucks? You know, but but so speaking of, of of just going to it and walking through the pain, brother. There was a moment in your life, bro. Um, I'm not sure you, you know, as far as, you know, the, the toughest or, or darkest, you know, but there was a moment that you went through, brother. And and, and one thing I, I, I love about you, Nate, is that you knew not to go through things by yourself. And I thank God that it, you, before you went through a moment, you had we're talking about brotherhood. You had a circle around you, you know, and there was just this 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 uh, uh, broken area in your journey that I think would be such a, a ministry and bring so much value to others who might see you and say, Oh man, this guy's got it all together. Yeah. He went through some things. Then he went to, you know, to, to Arizona, got it all together and now he's doing good, but there's such a big missing part that they need to know, brother. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, this whole thing is kind of full circled itself a little bit. Like we need to understand that we don't understand every part of everybody's story. Yeah. And what you see isn't so all that good. isn't all that needs to be known. And not everything you know is all that there is to know. Yeah. And so we can look at people's lives in their current state and we can judge them a whole lot. Um, you know, I'm thankful. I've talked about this a couple of times today. Like I'm thankful for my now. Yes. But to get to my now, I had to take some steps. Um, I had to go through, through some things that I wouldn't wish on other people. Um, but because I went through some things, I was able to see and understand some other people that I would not have understood wow. or seen otherwise. And so, yeah, um, I were leading uh, young adults at 20. Um, I start dating. I get engaged. I get married at 24. Um, get married at 24. And then kind of life hits the fan. Um, some things take place. Some yeah. events happen. Um, and, uh, and I end up find myself in a place that I never thought that I would, you know, a lot of people find themselves in a broken marriage and go, man, I, I came from that a generation of broken marriages or I didn't come from that. I didn't come from a place where I had bad relationships. I didn't see bad, um, activity in the home. Um, but I find myself with everything kind of going right. The biggest part of my life going wrong. Um, I wasn't unengaged. I wasn't un. Uh, I, did, I wasn't a bad leader. I wasn't an unloving husband, but still stuff happens because the reality is things still happen. Like life still happens to us. We can, we are responsible for everything that we do in our life, mm. but we cannot control what anybody else does in their life. When we get to heaven one day, I'm not going to be held responsible for what Lodo did. Yeah. I'm not. Or what Phil does. I'm not I'm going to be held responsible for what I do. And in our life, we're going to notice that there's things because we live in a broken world, because we are selfish by nature, the things other people are going to do are going to affect us. And so I found myself in a broken spot, ended up divorced. And I really started to question a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a culture that says if you're divorced, um, you're deteriorating and you're left to the side of the road. You're not worth anything. And so where I had thought in my 19s, 20s, man, I had figured out my identity and what God had called me to be. Now I'm staring it in the face going, is there a group of people that still want me to do what I feel like God's asking me to do? And it's those moments that we have to stare what God says and what others say straight in the face and go, which one am I going to listen to? And maybe there is a third voice, what you say, what others say, and what God says. The loudest one needs to be what God says. Culture will say the loudest one needs to be what you say, but I'll be honest with you, Lodo, you and I talked about this. Sure. I talk to myself sometimes and yeah. I don't say very nice things to myself very much. There are times where I'm super encouraging regardless of what everybody else says, but there are times in my life that I am the worst critic of myself. I'm not sure that needs to be the guiding voice of my life. Mm. I definitely know I don't trust other people's voices mm. because they are, um, they, they will move and be swayed by the way that my life and actions affect them. Mm. If my life in one direction affects them positively, they're going to root for that one. 
if my life in another direction affects them negatively, they're probably going to root for the other direction yeah. and they're swayed. So if, if my, my voice is faulty and their voice is faulty, then who, who do I listen to? And there's people that are here watching this. If you've gotten this far, you, you are leaned in. Mm. And, I, and I'll tell you this, if you're, you are going to struggle with which voice in life do you listen to? Wow. Just take inventory. Which voice is more accurate? Because your voice ain't. Neither is the other voice around you. So I'll tell you a voice that's accurate. It's the word of God. And I had to start to take myself back to school, Man. Bible school. And I had to start to reading what God's word says. God's word says who I am. God's word called me to do what I've been called to do. Yeah. God's word says what qualifies me or disqualifies me. And I knew where I fell in those categories. And I said, okay, that I got to do what you've asked me to do. Mm. That was a, that was a hard hill to climb. I've climbed half dome before and that was challenging, but the, the climb for my own identity to listen to God's higher voice and not, not man's voice in the midst of the deep hole that I found myself in. No, that, that took work. It took reminding myself. It didn't happen overnight. I didn't wake up one day and write a powerful phrase on a mirror and say, I'm going to repeat that every day mm. when I wake up in the morning. No, I just had to know that God had called me to do something. I had to live my life wow. accordingly to that. Can I be honest with you? Some of y'all are coming from broken homes and this, uh, this, um, uh, this applies just the same that you may have done something yesterday, but today you're trying to live a better life. Just start today living yes. what God has called you live according to God's word. Yes. If you would live your life according to God's word, I don't know what to do tomorrow. Again, live today. Psalm says this, that I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against mm. thee, that your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. It will give you the guiding direction for your life. Don't listen to your voice. Don't listen to others voice. Listen to the word of God and you will find yourself no matter where you've gotten yourself to, or where others have affected you to be, you will find yourself following God's voice again. Is that not what Jesus did when the, when the disciples were out on a boat and the storm happens and they're like, Hey, there's fog. I can't see where to go. I don't know which way is right, which land and which direction we should be heading to. And yet Jesus calls out to them from the midst. He walks upon the water and he says, no, come, come this direction. Come meet me there. You are living through some foggy times right now with everything that's going on. Socio, sociology, socially, um, politically, economically, everything. But yet if we would listen to the still small voice, like come the prophet on. Ezekiel, we would say, man, I found where my guiding voice comes from. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, pastor, man. That's, um, and thank you for sharing that because you answered my next question. And what, what do you say to, to someone who find himself in that brokenness that you found yourself and, and, and what do you say to the other person who might have caused that? And I think you just answered both both questions, mm -hmm. you know, and just finding that voice. Do not listen to anybody else's voice and not even our own, because you you described it so well. At times, man, we're we're our worst enemies, mm -hmm. you know, bottom line, you know. And and thank you, man. Wow, that I mean that I I I don't want to just run right to that because there's people right now. There's people right now who's who, 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 who's trying to absorb this, you know, and they might feel like, man, they're, they're in the midst of that brokenness. That's like, usually we do things that, like this at the end, you know, but I just I really feel that there's a stirring now. Would, would you just pray real quick for both of those people, those who find themselves broken and also those who, you know, because whether it's divorce, whether whatever kind of tragic, you know, uh, tragedy we go through life. On both ends are lives. Mm -hmm. On both ends yep. are people. 100%. Can you pray, please? Yeah. God, we thank you for who you are. God, you are a gracious God. And sometimes in our life, we find ourselves in dark places and go, where are you? The reality is you have not left us. The Bible says that you've never left us nor forsaken us. That even in the depths of our darkness, that we can call out to you and lean onto you like, Daniel did in the lion's den to know who you are and who you've called him to be. God, I pray for the person, the listener right now that you would speak to them, whether they have caused pain or whether they are carrying pain. God, your still small voice would remind them, like you said in Jeremiah 1, that you had called them, that you had shaped them, that you had formed them before any days of their earth, which means that you, as you, as the days were written out, God, you still knew that they had some more in them to succeed through what was coming. So, God, I just pray right now, uh, spiritual um, courage to get up from the hole that they're in. God, no, they don't. 
They don't need to have the conversation of, do I deserve this? Should I be here? Is this just natural for me? No, they need to have the conversation of what you want for their life. Yes, Lord. So God, I pray that you would take them to your word. Your word does not return void, which means that it is living and active, which when we apply it into our life, does something to benefit us in our life when we follow your word. And so God, I pray right now for the heart, of those that are hurting, that you would cover and mend. Yes, God. But I don't want you to just cover and mend and leave them in the room mm. saying, oh, we're just going to wait on till the next time. But God, I pray you would purpose them, remind them of who they are God, and what you've asked them to do. God, and the reality is in an instant, you'll forgive us wow. and then you'll remind us of our purpose. Yes, Lord. In Jesus name. Thank you, Pastor. You know, you just gave this powerful illustration on, on the voice that we need to listen to. And there's no way I could just uh, go on to the next thing without listening to that voice that's telling us, man, there's somebody that really needed that. There's somebody that just needed that moment and just needed needed that prayer. You know, uh, we're, we're, we've got just a few more things here. You know, uh, 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 Pastor Nate, you're, you're now, you know, uh, Pastor at Cornerstone. You know, uh, um, uh, can you give everybody your correct title, bro? Um, I do anything and everything that my dad asks me to do. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> yes, I love it. That's that's good. Yes, amen. We're, we're gonna leave it at that. But but that's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. Can you write that out on the lower third? <laughs> yes. Anything and everything that Pastor Franklin asks him to do, I'm gonna do it. But don't but don't send that to him because he'll still argue when I come over to his house. He'll still argue and tell people he still doesn't take out the trash. And that's <laughs> oh not that's the one thing possibly yes. not in my. Job title. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so that's exactly what I want to want to talk about. Just talk to us about the daily life, in, in, in Pastor Nate. You know, in regards to your job and what you do, brother. Man, um, well, first off, my first job is being a husband. Come on, and come um, on. and being a father. I yes. got I got yes. remarried again about three months yes. ago, a little over three months ago, yes. and yes. I became instant husband, instant dad yes. Um, yes. to yes. a four and a fifteen Love year old. And AJ. it is congratulations, um, yes, it is awesome. But I am learning some new things okay. every day. So yes. that is my uh, that is my first job and my first role, and yes. I and I love it. Um, but now I understand why coffee was given to us because um, we cannot get as much done in the day. Um, without it. Now, some of y'all are like, no, you're just a coffee addict. I might be. All right. I'll go back to recovery. Um, I'll call my best friend, Alex Delgado, who was on the podcast before this. We'll work through this. Um, but, um, but no, my daily role is, it is that, I mean, we, we try to turn our walk with the Lord very Mm -hmm. corporate. I've got some roles. I've got some things that I do and responsibilities on my hat, but my job is what you said earlier. It's to be a servant. Yes. I'm here to serve those above me and I'm here to serve those around me. Amen. Amen. And so that, that does, it looks, it looks different um, from how Cornerstone Fresno is engaged online um, from every social platform, every um, live platform to how we're engaged in building our volunteers or our leaders, because I do believe that everybody's a leader. I believe that as Moses had a conversation with his father-in-law, Jeff throw, he he told them, Hey, not everybody has the same capacity, but everybody can lead somebody. And so I want to remind people in a world that we live in, God has called you to be a leader. You may only be able to lead your home, but lead your home well and with excellence. Or I want to remind you, Hey, there is some more capacity in you. You may be called to lead tens or hundreds or thousands of people yes man okay this guy's being being uh modest now you know because man pastor nate i watched you through the whole COVID experience you know and just how you and your team there just stepped it up but it was it was it was kind of a uh uh you know, a, a real challenge for you because you really had to throw on like five different hats. You know, we, we don't have enough time to get into all of that right now. But, man, I just I really appreciate how you guys just adapted. You, you guys did what needed to be done. And 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 the whole COVID experience, you know, it was it was a very tragic time, you know. But I thank God for the great leadership that uh, helped us navigate through all that, you know. And as a side of uh, uh, benefit of it was that. You know, we have such a great team now, you know, mm-hmm. that works under you, you know, with all of our tech, you know, as I, I believe people can see the difference, you know, in our Sunday morning services, you know, as we stream it, you know, but um, speaking of leadership, you know, we talked earlier and it was something that you mentioned, you know, about the the world that we're in today and how so many are so caught up in the next, you know, they, they can't take the time to really, you know, appreciate the now, you know, and, and I think that just goes to, to what, what, uh, what I want to bring up next. And that's, we, we live in a society now where leadership is lacking. So can you talk about h- how do you lead? Uh, how do you lead a society, a generation or a culture 
honestly, let's just be point blank, that doesn't want leadership. Well, I, I don't blame them. Mm. I, I don't blame them. If you don't understand leadership and you just look at how we wow. locally define or um, culturally define leadership, I, I would say, uh, no, thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not trying to pinpoint whoever you think that I'm trying to pinpoint in your brain right now as you listen to this. Like, I'm not pinpointing it. Maria? I'm just saying there is <laughs> that's between you and wow. Maria. Okay. I'm not yeah, trying to man. pinpoint anybody, but the reality yeah, is yeah. we can all, somebody comes to mind that we think is yeah. ill-equipped for leadership and they're there. Mm. So yeah, if I, if I allow culture to define what a leader is, then, then yeah, I don't want leadership. Yeah. But then we've got to ask ourselves, do we need to be led though? Okay. Okay. And w- reality is we're so, I use this word, overuse this word. We're so prideful. We think, we think we don't need to be led. I, I can remember back as long as this is now over a decade ago, 23 being 23 and going, wow, yeah. I can do that. Yeah. I remember applying for a job, um, a district really with a district manager of a large corporation. I was applying for a certain yes. high level um, position and um, I got done with the interview and I thought I nailed the interview. I was, oh man, I was on everything. I looked good, smelled good. And I mm. walked out of that room and I didn't get the job. Wow. And I remember my boss who had shaped me. Um, still had still one of the guys that has shaped me in a small amount of time, more than most people would realize, mm. but he pulled me aside afterwards and said, you want to know why you didn't get the job? Of course I want to know why I didn't get the job. He said, cause you walked in there acting like you didn't need me. Wow. He said, why would I hire somebody who doesn't need me? You act like you knew more than me. Mm. You act like you had every answer to the problems you didn't know were coming. And the reality is we live this way culturally Mm -hmm. because we've seen so many bad leaders. We think we don't need leaders. Wow. No, we still need leadership. What do leaders do? Leaders know the way, go the way, show the way and go the way. We still need those people. That's a line from John Maxwell. We still need people who know things we don't know, who show us things that we can't see and who are willing to go places that we don't have the courage to go. In that fact, there's plenty of places in my life. That I would say, yeah, I need a leader. Mm. I, I need somebody that leads me and teaches me how to be a better husband. Yes. Because there's some things about being a husband that I don't Jeez. know and I can't see and I don't have the courage to do. Okay, I need a leader there. And in other categories of my life. But the reality is, Lodo, we don't want leaders. Yeah. We want coaches. Come on. We want wow. consultants. Jeez. We want people that we can pay for their opinion, mm. that they can tell us how off the field nice. we're doing. But well, when we're on well, the field, well. we're the play caller. We're the manager. Mm. We're the one that's doing it. Well, how well has that worked for us? Yeah. We can talk about that not just as a nation, but as a culture around the globe. How well does it work for us when we run our own play? Yeah. Oh, gosh. It doesn't yeah. work well at all. Oh. Can I just stop it there? It does mm-hmm. not work it. We can talk about it as a nation. We are more divided now than we've been in a long time because everybody wants to run their own play. Every part of our political system wants to run their own play. The nation wants to do this. The state governor wants to do that. Yeah. And the city capital wants to do this. And then the board of supervisors, want, nobody wants to work together. Nobody wants to be led. Nobody wants to submit because mm-hmm. to submit would mean to know that I don't know something that wow. you know. Jeez. Wow, the answer to pride is humility? Gosh, man. Oh, wow, that on. sounds like a biblical concept. What would happen if we in our lives started to live more humbly, acknowledging that there are things that we don't know and that there are other people in our life that God has sent to us to help us figure the things out that we don't know? This is, man. You got the amen of the camera guy just like <laughs> dancing back there. It's like, a truth. Uh, and, and, and this is yeah. so true. Yeah. Brother, you you're gonna probably well, Philip, get ready. We're gonna get some emails because right. you are being so anti millennial right now. You're being so anti cultural right now. Like, what do you mean I have to submit? What do you mean I have to listen to somebody yeah, else? Tell them what to do. And, and and yeah, and you're hitting it right on 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 the money. It it reminds me of, of us as kids. I don't know about anybody else, man, but. There that was, was a long time was, ago, Lodo. Yeah. That was a long time ago. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a few episodes ago. Uh, you wow. know, but um, man, like, you know, isn't it crazy how our parents can tell us to do a certain chore? Mm-hmm. And we just throw a fit. Like, what? I have to do it right now, you know? And it just mm-hmm. takes forever. But we go to our friend's house 
And their parent tells us to do the same exact thing. Oh, yeah. I don't know about everybody else, but man, I will get up and I will just gladly do it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes. Gladly. Okay, exactly. is there anything else that I can do to exactly. help you? Exactly. And we, mm-hmm. we won't even wait for it. We'll go True. wash their dishes and just clean the room <laughs> yeah. and everything, you know? And and it's sad. And I think it comes to what you, you just pointed out. People are more interested in having cultures than fathers. You know, uh, um, it's, it's, you know, Hey, I want to go, you know, I'd rather listen to the coach because the coach is connected to what I like to do, which is play the sport, you know, and at least the coach is not making me do my chores every single day. I don't have to come home to this coach. I don't have to wake up to the coach. I just have to spend about three, four five hours with the coach. And that's it. I get to go home. But with the, the, the real leader in my house, for some reason, uh, Pastor Nate, it, it, it's different when it comes to those things. Yeah. No, you it's know. so good. You know, people, we talk about, man, people only see, you wanted me to get on this podcast because you wanted people to know me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's a lot of things that people see and there's a lot of things that people don't know. No. There's a lot of things that people assume. And I ain't mad at you. I assume yeah. things about you too. It's all right. Yes. Like it happens in life. But, you know, I am only where I am today because of the people that God has placed around me and because of the willingness that I had to submit to people that he has placed above me. And one of those people are, do happen to be my father, yes. my actual father. I had to learn a long time ago. Am I going to buck up or am I going to bow down? Mm. Wow. That, that just rang some people because they're like, you don't ever need to bow down to anybody. Why? Why? Ba- bowing is an acknowledgement that I honor you. It's not just an acknowledgement of honor. It's an, I mean, of, of worship. It's an acknowledgement of honor. Yes. It's not just an acknowledgement of honor. It's an acknowledgement of trust. When I can give you the back of my head and the back of my neck, it says that I trust that you're not going to do something to me. Man. And we live so anxious because we don't trust anybody. God forbid we don't trust the generation above us. I learned a long time ago, if I want to make more impact in this world than I ever could on my own, I got to do it on the backs of other people. People are like, well, that sounds bad. No, no, no. I got to be standing on the shoulders of somebody that's gone before me. Yes. I've got to be willing to be boosted. I've got to be willing to be picked up. I've got to be willing to be told no. I've got to be willing to be pushed back. I've got to be willing to know that they know some things that I don't know. Everybody talks about how much my father has praised me in my life, Mm. but you don't know the backside conversations that we've had where he's had to correct me Mm. because a good father doesn't correct in public. Wow. A good father doesn't make what is private public. He has stood behind me. He has stood in front of me. He has stood between me and something on some things, but that's a good father. Yeah. And so I trust him. I don't trust him as my father. I trust him as my pastor. I understand that he hears from God on my behalf. I'm not just the only one that needs to hear from God for me. I need other people to hear from God for me. And I need to acknowledge that God may speak louder to other people about me than me. I need that in my life. And if our culture could just understand the idea of honor, we got to understand the idea of fatherhood. And I get it. We live in a world that the enemy has so deceived that we don't need fathers, that we just need individual people that are donors of this behalf and donors on that. And it's one person's decisions. It's not two people's decision. It doesn't need to be, we don't need to make families. We don't need to make babies in a family. We don't need to put babies and bring them into homes. And I understand not everybody knows everything that I know or has been able to be exposed to everything that we've been exposed to. But I'll tell you, the enemy has deceived us into misunderstanding the idea of honor and authority. And so because we have seen the abuse of honor uh, being dishonorable people living in positions that we would say, quote unquote, we'd honor, we choose to run from it. And because we have seen so much authority abused, we choose to deny it. But I'll tell you the thing that will benefit us in our life is to live in a position of honor and to acknowledge that we do need authority over us. I need God as my ultimate authority. I need other people in my life that see into my life, that know things that I don't know, that go places that I don't go, that will show things that I can't see into my life. But I have to acknowledge that they have an authority in my life that I don't have. I don't need to be the greatest strength in my life Mm. because if I'm the greatest strength in my life, my strength ends when my strength ends. But if I've got somebody else that has a higher authority that I can call on that name. See, this is the thing that we don't talk about at the rich young ruler. And I, I am a pastor. So I will always go back to the Bible is that the rich young ruler, the, not the rich young ruler, the, uh, the prodigal son that he left a house that he could have taken what his dad had given him and multiplied it in a way that no other generation had done before. But he decided to squander the gift that he had given rather than sow into it because he didn't want to submit yeah. 
He couldn't sow because he didn't want to submit because he was selfish. Gosh, man. Maybe if I wake up in the morning and say, God, show me where I'm selfish. Show me where I need to sow and not squander. Mm. Show me where I need to submit and not lead. This is just blowing my mind right now. Just today, I'm working on a post I'm going to be putting up. And the heart of it is we are such silly people. As kids, we grow up and, you know, we, we, we admire and we honor our parents, but somehow we get to a point where we're almost kind of, we want to go and build our own thing, Pastor Nate. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's where you're going to, you know, with, with the prodigal son, we want to go build our own thing when really we could just multiply what daddy handed over already, what daddy already <sighs> built. We can build on that. But, but, you know, we, we're kind of ashamed a little bit. So we don't really want to recognize, right. Mom and dad, you know, during this period of our lives, and it kind of stays with us, you know, from, from, from you know, usually around teenage uh, years, you know, all the way up. And it's crazy because we don't want to really recognize them and the role that they have in our lives. Mm -hmm. And then the funeral comes. Yep. And all of a sudden we're fighting with everybody on who represented them most. Yep. And it is so sad because we waited until the end. Just to, to see, you know, to, to show about that. Well, I really love, mm -hmm. and we put them on our shirt and I have the biggest, big, biggest uh, picture. You know, I have, I have more of daddy sweater than everybody else. Right. I have the most pictures. Like that would have been so great while they were alive. Right. It would have been so awesome if they were here to see that. And it would be so awesome for our fathers to see that, man, we built on a platform that they put down for us. Right. You know? And, 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 and so, man, that that's, I mean, what you're just sharing is, is, is so awesome I can't, I can't really add anything, but what, 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 you know, just, just the fact that, man, I'm literally working on a post, you know, I, right. I'm putting up, you know, that, that really says exactly okay. what you're saying. And can we acknowledge, like, I know I keep cutting Phil off. Like, can yeah. we just acknowledge, like, not everybody has a great father. They're like, oh man, I'm not yes. listening to you. But, but we're not just talking about natural fathers. There's people in your life that you can put in a place of authority and honor that want to deposit some things in your life. Like, can I just be really honest? And you've just lived this and I'm thankful for your vulnerability. Like, I don't, I don't want to walk away from my father's funeral with an inheritance. Mm. I want to walk away from my father's funeral with an accent because that's what he carried every day. I don't want, I don't want to walk away with a, with a picture on the wall. I want to walk away with an anointing that he walks. Come in. on. I don't, I don't want to walk away mm. from a funeral from time that we no longer get from the people that we love the most from yeah. people that we spend the time. I, I don't, I don't want to just appear to be like him. I want to remind people of him. So that's what fatherhood is. That's what a authority in our life. They, they shape us. They deposit yeah. something in us. And can we just be honest? There's people in our life that have sown 40, 50, 60 years into things. What if we took that and ran My with it yeah. rather than running away from it because mm. we're so prideful and we've got to develop on our own. Wow. I made a commitment long time ago. That's why I started with Jeremiah, uh, not Jeremiah 29, uh, 11, but Jeremiah 29, four, five, and six yes, sir. is that my call was not to LA. My call is not to Seattle. My call is not to New York. My call is to my home Amen. where my family resides. It's a place where God has asked me to establish myself. He may not ask everybody else, but I don't need to be an entrepreneur. Mm. No, I just need to be a Come good son, son that Woo! serves a community. And Man. I need to understand this, that the promise of Jeremiah 29, four, five, and six says that if you establish Establish yourself in a place that I've asked you to establish yourself. Not only will your family be blessed, but the prosperity of the city in which you dwell in will be tied to your establishment. Can I tell you, I'm not looking for my kids to have an inheritance and an inheritance and an inheritance. I'm looking for Fresno to be better because I've established myself Over here you, because I've decided to sow myself into a land that Good nobody Lord. else wants to sow themselves on. Go ahead. You can forsake the no, but I believe that there's treasure <laughs> in these hills, that there's something in this <laughs> land that God's called yes. me to be a part of. So Thank I will sow my family into this ground Amen. because God has called me here. And I know that the establishment of my life, declaring a home yeah. where everybody else wants to call it a pass through place. I'm going to call mm. it a home. Doesn't just bless my kids and my grandkids, you, but it blesses the people in which call this place, their home Thank the same. Jesus. And if we would live in honor and authority and learning what establishment calls us to, not just this entrepreneur, I've got to develop everything. Nobody else. Wants. Really, this entrepreneurial spirit is, is tied to the spirit of pride wow. that everybody just wants their own thing. Is, wow. is that yeah. not what the, what mm. the nations of, uh, uh, 
that the nations of Israel went and attacked to is the people that had their own name for yes. themselves. Because if you look at the Canaanites and the Hizites and the Hivites and all of those ites, they were all people that wanted to be known for something other than the children of God. They all tie back to the option of being known as the children yes, of God, but they but, took the other option. I don't wow. want to take the other option. Amen. I want to be known as a man who serves the Lord, Thank that lives God. towards the Lord. That's what I want to be known for. Amen. Sorry, I keep rambling. Ooh. That's where I go. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, Praise God. This is awesome. Taking me back. Billville? Anything uh, before I, I... Uh, so many things go you just so many things to unpack. We could be here forever, but I think it just comes to mind conversations you and I have, but uh your dad, my longtime pastor, uh, and and those, I mean, we grew up at Cornerstone for those watching may not have know the context of, of that. That means so many things to us. Cause that, that's, that's still my, my home. That's like, okay, when I go see my church cousins, I say, right. or uh, uh, church brothers and church, you know, yes. that's where they're at. And so I was on staff there for those of you uh, watching. And I, th- I saw behind the scenes and then what God was doing in, in the men of God there, that God has anointed your dad, pastor Franklin and, and, and anointed you. But one nugget that stands in my mind, and I know you pre- you picked up the, the mantra and you're running with that. You preach it in, in your coaching or in your leadership. When those of us that desire, God, I want to be used by you. I want, want to do this for you. And the pastor then, your man that God, that God has placed for you to be under authority with, asks you to do X, Y, Z. And, and after we're saying, God, use me. We give all the X, Y, Z, why we can't do something. And, and I remember your dad would say, Philip, I understand. And what he's saying, well, I understand. But really what it was is I was making excuses. Mm. And when, and that leadership is called like, you can step up to do what God has called you to do in this season, in, in, in your life. This is, these are lessons that God mm. has, has instilled within me. And even till today, yep. it's like, no, you, you got it. There, there's, there's a always why. Well, don't give me, I remember in staff meetings, your dad are like, uh, if it had to do with even just maintenance, well, has it been tried? Well, no, we haven't, but it hasn't been tried. Yep. <laughs> and we're right. like, so yep. speak to that a little bit. How, how we, those of, are trying to, to accept the call God in their life and not necessarily a pastor position, but the call but anything. in anything and how we make excuses. David was anointed as King as a little boy who watched after sheep, but he didn't get into the palace for decades after. Yeah. Mm. You can be aware of the call of God on your life or the gift of your call. That does not mean that people are going to bow to you immediately. Wow. Yeah. That does not mean that people are going to serve you like the king that you think you're called to be. No, you still got to work to get there. Yeah. And so one of the things that I look at, and I'm, I'm going to give you some stuff that's in the brew house right now that's just been brewing. <laughs> David was really good at delivering Ooh. grilled cheeses. Yeah. Because when he went to fight Goliath, you know that he was there on assignment from his father. Mm. That was not a, that is not something he elected himself to do. Oh, that wasn't man. even something Come that after he has on. been anointed, why would I go deliver mm. grilled cheese, bread and cheese to yeah. these fighting soldiers? No, they will work for me one day. Like we can get real arrogant with that and we could miss wow. these moments. But if he would have missed his grilled cheese moment, those things that God asks you to do in your Jeez. life that seem so beneath you, don't miss those things because they're developing something in you. If he would have missed that, he would have missed, I'll tell you what he would have missed, an opportunity. Everybody prays for an opportunity, but yeah, they yeah. don't want it in the hands of a, of a mop bucket and some brushes. Yes. They don't want it in the hands of serving somebody that's never going to be able to give them a pat on the back. Wow. If David would have missed his grilled cheese moment and not delivered the bread and the cheese to his brothers and the other soldiers, he would not have shown up in a place that God was about to mm-hmm. use him to motivate or to promote him Jeez. because of the opportunity. Now, I'll be honest with you. The opportunity was there. David still had to have the courage. He still had to have the gifting. He still had to have the capacity and the calling to do mm. what he did. If he didn't have that, we, he could have missed on and the Israelites would have been defeated by the Philistines. Yeah. But because he didn't miss his breadbasket moment and he still answered to what his father asked him to do, again, go back to authority. Mm. He grabbed a hold of the thing yes, that somebody yes, above yes. him asked him to do that made no sense. He was able to operate in an opportunity that he was gifted and called and shaped to. My goodness, man. So I'm telling you guys, don't, don't overlook the small moments yeah. that may be beneath you that God is sending to develop you and to give you an opportunity that you are asking for. Yeah. 
I could label them over and over and over again. An opportunity to do this was hidden behind a task mm. to do that. Jeez, man. Thank you, God. So good. Amen. Amen. And, and, and there's so, oh, gosh, that story and, and the way you're presenting it, I can already see all the different nuggets that's going to come with it. You know, I mean, just everything from being faithful with just that curtain in front of the opportunity. Right. Faithful with that, you know, so that God, you know, because God is always trying to level us up. God is always trying to elevate his kids, you know, but he's not he's not a, a, an irresponsible father. He's going to make sure that we're ready for it. He's mm-hmm. going to make sure that we're not going to make a mess of it and make a mess of ourselves, you know. Yep. Yeah. So this is, you know, and again, this goes back to why we do need leadership. We need leadership also, you know, like Phil was talking about, for, we need people that's going to tell us what what we really need for mm-hmm. us to be better even when we don't want to hear it. Yep. You know, and this this is a this is a phenomenon that we experience all the time at Juvenile Hall, you know. People always wonder What's up, Maria? How how do you get these kids to just do whatever you need? We ask them to do like these kids will do anything for you. Well, well, that's that's because man, we 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 love on them, and 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 and, and we tell them the truth. You know, we love them enough to tell them the truth. And here's what's going on in that kid's head. That kid realizes like, okay, what Lotto's telling me, he knows I don't want to hear it, but at least he cares enough to tell me. Yep, that's so good. At least it's not like everybody else who keeps telling me what I want to hear or keeps telling me what they think. It's going to sound good to me. He knows he's going to get off of my friend list. This is going to get him kicked off my friend zone, you know, out of the friend zone for me. But at least he still cares enough to tell me what I, what's good for me. And it doesn't care about what, ha- what happens to him. You know, and, and those are the kind of leadership that we need in our lives. People who, who will tell you, you know, and challenge like, okay, have you done this? And not let you settle for excuses. Man, we can be here all day, Pastor Nate, you know, and, and you already know. We, you know, we can spend hours and the worst thing to tell us is to tell us how much time we have left. Because we right. will use every single 30 second seconds. of it. Yes. I'm just kidding. But, man, I want to get to, um, I really want to get to to what you, what you uh, touched on earlier. And that's, you know, we talked a lot about ministry. We talked a lot about leadership, but the real ministry happens at home. Brother, you just, you just celebrated earlier about something that happened in your life recently when you got married. Brother, we celebrate, man. We thank God. You know, we, man, we praise God for Bianca, you know, and your, 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 your kids, you know, you became, like you said, you became an instant father. Mm-hmm. So you talk about leadership, fatherhood. Talk to us about your family, bro, please. Man, I'm just... I thank the Lord, like, I thank the Lord for the gift that he's given me. I don't mean that facetiously. I I spent time in my life without, and I spent time in my life wondering if it would ever be. Wow. And here it is. Because the Lord is still faithful. Like, and I, I know the podcast slows down when we talk about this stuff, but I'm a very grateful man. Good. That understands that the gifts that I've been given, the things that I am required, responsible for now, these people that have a heartbeat that will make a decision to follow the Lord or the way I live will affect the way that they follow the Lord. It's my greatest joy and it's my greatest challenge. That's where it matters. You go back this whole podcast, it's home. It's home. Talk about my personal father that helped shape my life. Many people didn't have that. We just got done talking about David's father who taught him how to tend sheep and make Mm. grilled cheeses. We got to have fathers in our life. I get to now be a father. I've been wanting to be a father for so long. And so where people are like, man, you're an uphill battle. You just instantly became a father. Yeah, I did. But I've been preparing for this moment. Yes, sir. God's been giving me opportunities with nieces and nephews and people in the church and this and that. Man, I'm so happy, so thankful, but I don't have all the answers. I learn more every day. I need to talk to the Lord more today Mm. because I don't, my job is not to dictate what my wife does. My job is not to draw a box and tell her to sit in it. My job is not to live a life to where my, my kids have to listen to every command. My job is to steward lives so that they will love the Lord. And if they love me in turn, I hope so. But my job as a father is to lead them towards the Lord, God. to honor them, to serve them. And every day I get it right. 
And every day I get it wrong in one way. But I'm thankful for the grace of my Lord, and I'm thankful for the grace of my wife, yes. and for the grace of my kids. You know, family teaches you a lot about yourself. We always want to be the one teaching other people. But I've had more moments in the last year with a four-year-old that the <laughs> Lord has used to look me in the eye. Uh. Teach me some things about God's grace and teach me some things about my response and teach me some things about what I'm stewarding. My family laughs at it because it's the Holy Spirit speaking through a four-year-old. Yeah. That's the gift of family. And those are my kids. Ask me, well, no, 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 you, you, you became instant father. Those are my kids. Yes. You're going to have that conversation with me? Those are my kids. Those aren't somebody else's kids. Those are my kids. My boy's 15 year old. 15 years old, he's a football player at Clovis East. And I love it. Um, and God's teaching me a lot in that season. But I don't have to be an authority figure per se. I get to be a friend who speaks wisdom into his life. And then I've got a four-year-old that I get to be more of a father figure. Yes, They both have dads. They're both involved in their life, and I'm thankful. But now they get an extra dad. They get a person that gets to be there and care for them. And I'm thankful for that. Being where you're at now, people see, oh, look what he got. So look at he's a pastor now. He's doing it. But you, the ground, the, the foundation that was laid throughout the years, and then the tears and literally the, the things you did behind the scenes at the church from just changing lights and doing all the things. I'm sure you do a lot of those things still. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but all those things has, has really just uh, – Built you up, man, and I love that you you're reaping the things that you sowed. You know, what I mean, for so many, so Good many, Lord. so many years. In that, you know, now that you're your pastor, and uh, and I, I know that I'm no longer that church of Cornerstone, but I will always be part of that. And so we here uh, just want to share a little in this time of the, of the in this month with Pastor's appreciate, appreciation, and we have uh, a, somebody you want to hear. Just want to say thank you. What's going on, Pastor Nate? It's been an honor and privilege to know you the last 12 years. I've seen your commitment, your dedication, and all that you do for this church. It surely has not gone unnoticed. I've just seen you grown and leaps and bounds these last 12 years since I've met you. I truly believe that the Lord is using you in a mighty way, and he's going to take you from glory to glory to glory, and he's going to do great and mighty things in your life. Thank you. I just want to take a moment to thank Pastor Nate for all that he does here, that he has followed the call of God on his life, and that he has jumped in. He does everything around here. I don't think people know how much he actually does. I just want to shout out appreciation to you. Uh, knowing you since you were a kid, I've seen God work. I've seen God do some great and amazing things in your life. And I appreciate his hand upon you. And the fact that you have become not only uh, a good husband, uh, a good son, but you are a man of God and you are a good pastor. So God bless. just want to give a big shout out to Pastor Nate for always investing into my life and for always reminding me to always be leaned in. Love you, brother. Hey, Pastor Nate, just want to take some time to thank you for being a hardworking pastor. I do appreciate you as a Pastor Appreciation Month. And let me tell you, watching you mature and grow up in the church from a young man to a, a man of God and, and somebody that I look and respect uh, just from the word that you share at the pulpit to everything that you're about. So thank you once again for blessing us. And God bless you. And I know you're going to do mighty things that are still to come in your life. Amen. Pastor Lee Franklin. My brother, when I was asked the opportunity to be able to share what I, what I feel about you, first thing I want to do is I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you because since you were a child, I've seen you grow up. i see you involved in ministry. I've seen you involved with my family. We vacation together with my kids. You've always been a blessing. I have seen you all your, all your life. You've always been consistent in your walk with God. You've always loved the Lord. You've always loved people. You've always blessed me in personally. You've blessed me with my family. So I want to thank you. You're an awesome preacher. God can do some great things in your life. So some things that I'm appreciative for Pastor Nate for is his hard work and 
his willingness. He's always saying yes to something and he's always doing something and yet he never shows us how tired he is no matter how big or how small the task is and how many tasks that he has. He does everything in love and with intention. He's very intentional on how he does it and the way that he does it and overall it's just it's great. He doesn't do it for the thank you or the applause, the pat on the back. He does it because he's called to do it and because he wants to do it. Um, and Pastor Nate is truly just somebody that you can rely on. He is the shoulder that you can lean on when things get hard or if you just need somebody to listen to you. Pastor Nate's your guy because he does it with love and he's just a great guy to go to for that stuff. Your response? You know, it's surreal when you're You live a life to impact others and yet you don't care to for others to know that you're making an impact on their life. But when somebody tells you, thank you, um, it makes all the effort worth it. Yeah. And a thank you goes a long way. I, I see you goes a long way. And so I could tell you who those people were and the times I've spent with those people, um, probably the one, the, the two guys matter a lot. They've been voices in my life that have reminded me who I am. Um, the one that probably hits me a little bit is probably the, the young girl. Um, because oh, I knew who it was. I just didn't know if I wanted to say her name or not. Because our goal is not to do what we're doing for ourselves or our current generation. But there's a world of people and a generation of people that that need to know who God is and need to know why we do what we do. So when someone younger than we are can say, you've helped me, helped me see God. And the reason why you do what you do is because God asked you to do it. It's a win in my book. I don't care if anybody, I've said this a thousand times and I'll say it a thousand more. I don't care if anybody knows my name. But I hope that the things that I do remind them of the Lord. The areas that I serve, the moments of impact, or the things that I say remind them of the Lord. Because it's the Lord who gives them hope. It's the Lord who brings salvation. It's the Lord who brings a resolution. It's the Lord. So I'm thankful. Thank you for sharing those things. It's not done. Yeah. Speaking of people who know you, they might know you a little different. You know, I've been there. Uh, This person says, I remember her saying that you're her first best friend. Happy Pastor's Appreciation, Pastor Nate. Where do I even start? Well, you've definitely held the title of brother a little bit longer than you've held the title of pastor in my life. So I'll just start there. And man, you have always been there for me when I needed it always. You've always been there if I've been in a pickle from the dumb little things to dropping my phone in the toilet at Phoenix First and you having to go and retrieve it to, you know, being one of the first people that I told that I was pregnant with Ethan and playing and stepping into that role of uncle dad for for a long time. You've always been faithful and committed to the things Um, that you've made commitments to, you've been faithful for that. And so I know as a pastor, I've seen you do that too. You've been committed and faithful to the people that you've made commitments to online. Um, And and so I know that you're going to continue to do that. So I just pray that your future, um, God will continue to place the things on your plate um, that you can be faithful to and be everything that you need to be for those things that are on your plate. I know that you will be. I know that you Um, We'll make those investments and they will grow and into other people. They will grow into other ministries. They will grow into other things because that's what you do. You are faithful to the things that God has um, put in your life that you've made commitments to. So anyhow, I hope that you're having a great day and just know you are appreciated as a pastor and as a brother. Your response. (laughs) And we talk about it. It's at home. Right now I have my own home, but I have a family that saw me before everything and still sees me and they know things you don't know. And you have to have a family that still supports you and is behind you. Like that matters. Uh, and so I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the words, the words of my sister, um, the care and the concern. Um, we've talked. Yeah. 
We can talk for hours about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm Sam, thankful. Last one we have is, uh, well, I'll just play it. I wonder if you recognize the voice. Hi, baby. I just wanted to tell you that I appreciate you. At first, I appreciate the man of God that you are. I appreciate that you put God first in everything that you do. You put him at the center of your life and at the center of our life and our marriage. Um, I'm thankful for the leader that you are, that you lead with honor and integrity. I'm thankful for how you lead others and how you honor others. Um, I'm just so grateful for you. I'm grateful for the father that you are to our kids and how you teach them to love and honor God with their whole hearts, their minds, their souls, and their spirit. I am just grateful for you and the voice that you are for our family. I cannot thank you enough for the way that you love me and the way that you lead. You truly are a blessing in my life. Thank you for continuing to love us and, and fight for us. And for me, thank you for everything that you do. Truly, you truly are a pillar of strength. And I admire that the most about you. I do admire your, your loud voice. And I believe it truly is a gift from the Lord, a gift to this world because we need that, we need your voice. We need all that God has given you. And I, I am blessed to be your wife. I love you and I appreciate you. Have a great day. I'm big of a mate cause, cause, he, cause he always looks me up in the sky when we take a picture. And what else? And, 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 and when I was, when I was so sick, when 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 I was getting out of the bath, I was too sick because I get a a big cough every every time. And when when he feed me when when I was drinking water, cause cause I had a cough because I was sitting on the gate. <laughs> Never mind. I was just sitting on the cam the counter so and then he saved me so I like so he throws you in the air he plays with you he takes care of you when you're sick what else and 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 I giggle for me cause cause he always hugs me when he he always lets me go play at the swings and everything else yeah well, happy Pastor Appreciation Day to Nathan. Um, I am so privileged and grateful to have the three kids that we have that are serving Jesus and can't say um, enough about how that makes me feel as a mom. I'm so grateful that our kids are loving Jesus. But Nathan, this is Pastor Appreciation Day, so I wanna appreciate you. I wanna tell you that um, I love your passion for Jesus. I love the fact that you're not just a preacher who preaches the word, and you do. You fire us up when you preach, but also the fact that you have a passion in your heart to touch Jesus and to touch other people. Don't ever lose that passion, because that passion will always lead you. And I can't wait to see what God has for you in the future. I love you, son. Happy Pastor Appreciation Day. One of the things that every pastor, I think, dreams of is I talk to them and they find out about the relationship that we have. He says, oh, I, I want that for one of my children, and I'm so thankful that I've got that. Not merely just uh, a man of God that pursues God, that's what all my kids do, but to see specifically the calling of God on your life and the calling here is to Cornerstone to see us continue the vision of bringing our city back to God. So yes, I, I'm appreciative of all the pastors that I've got, but obviously there's a unique relationship that we have, even when you frustrate me sometimes. <laughs> I, I can't respond. That's, okay. That's so good. Uh, <laughs> You're truly blessed. You're truly blessed. I am. That is. That leaves me speechless for sure. I know the feeling, Pastor Nate. You know, just seeing somebody you love so much say those things about you. Um, one thing about you, your dad, you know, and, and, and people like you guys, you guys are such great givers, but you're terrible at receiving, <laughs> you don't know how to receive, <laughs> anyway, I can see it all over you, you know, and I'm, I'm the blind guy, you know, true or not true, eh? and, and it's like, you know, I mean, you give so much and it's yeah. like, you become such a great giver, glory to God. But man, when people thank you, it's like, you don't even know how to, to oh. deal. It's like, you, you know, but I know, I know that your heart is full and, and, and man, Again, Pastor Nate, I want to thank you so much for coming and just 
you know, making yourself available to us. I, 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 I couldn't have asked for a better, um, to me, you know, I couldn't have asked for a better turnout. You know, I, I, I know this is going to be such a blessing to, to many, you know, but, uh, again, pastor Nate, I want to thank you and pastor, thank you for being our pastor. Thank you for, you know, just yes. taking leadership, you know, because really you pastoring was not the only option. You had quite a few other options, brother, and, and, and very appealing ones, man. You know, so, so I, I, I know, I know what you didn't do. You know, a lot of people don't, don't know that, you know, so they, they don't, they don't really know the value of you becoming, you know, the, the leader and, and taking the position that you have now. So thank you, pastor, for just taking the leadership and, and, uh, and really just being a, an amazing man of God. But honestly, man, for me and Phil, man, just thank yes. you for being a, just an awesome brother. It just, it's, you know, when, when, when you know somebody and when, when you're praying for that person and just, just really going to the math for him and you see him collect wins yes. and, and man, now he's yes. walking and just living his dream and with family and Bianca, it's just brother, I can't, wasn't that amazing? It, yeah, it was amazing. Truly a powerful, anointed, everything. Great brother, longtime friend. Um, he was there in, in probably the, one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult part of my life. Amen. Thank you, uh, Franklin family, Pastor Franklin, Pastor Cindy, Nate, and everybody. And visit cornerstonefresno.com for more information. They, you can also find them on YouTube and, and their services are streamed. We'll have their links in the description below. But again, thank you for joining us on the Overflow EXT podcast where we're continuing the conversation. See you next week. God bless. Love y'all. You've been listening to Overflow, the extended conversation, obliterating social norms, and overrunning the cultural corrosion with righteous rhetoric and common sense. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit us up on social media at Overflow EXT. Lord bless, and we'll see you next time on Overflow, the extended conversation. Bianca saw three cars here and I didn't know that he, he was here. Oh. Um, and so she called, she laughed. She was like, did Lodo drive here again? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we tell you one story about Lodo driving. Right. And, uh, yeah. All of a sudden.